is so stupid it's positively brilliant. The brilliant performance podcast. Charlemagne the God, Andrew Schultz, we are the Brilliant Idiots, and today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Showtime and the critically acclaimed series, The Shy. If you don't know, The Shy Season 2 has started. Uh, I watched it Sunday. The heart and soul of Chicago's South Side lies in this community, but when your world is a daily struggle just to get by, can you rise up and stand tall to realize a better tomorrow? Ronnie, Brandon, Emmett. Kevin, confront the tough choices that will shape their futures in the shy. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. The shy was uh, a bit too much for me this past Sunday. It was way, it was way too dark. It was really dark? Way too dark. Why? I mean, maybe maybe, maybe if, if if it wasn't because of the Nipsey Hustle circumstances right. and I wasn't already in kind of a funk, I wouldn't have thought it was so dark. Right. But it was just too much for me. I'm like, I don't want this right now. Right. You know what right. I mean? Where's the fucking Lion King when you need it? But uh, it's created and executive produced by Emmy Award winner Lena Waif and Academy Award winner Common. The new season of The Shy premieres Sunday, April 7th at 10 p.m. only on Showtime. To try a free month for Showtime, go to Showtime.com and enter the code IDIOTS. This offer is for first-time subscribers only and expires May 6, 2019. Spoiler alert, avoid the last five minutes of the shy. It's a damn shame what they did to that old lady. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm giving people disclaimers, okay? I didn't have the stomach for it. We got another pre-roll show? Uh, I guess we do. Yes, we do. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. You got to turn a great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind with beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything. You can easily, easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, all you got to do is use Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support to help you. All right, head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your, excuse me, your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start start the show. Charlamagne, you got any church announcements? Church announcements. What are we telling the people about? Do I have any church announcements? I can never remember. I got some church announcements, yeah. so I can start, and then go if ahead, they inspire you, then you can do it. Um, uh, uh, big news on the tour front, new tour. Okay, tickets on sale today. Andrew Schultz, the Matador Tour, brought to you by Monster Energy and Outbreak. Um, shout out to Monster Energy and Outbreak for getting involved and sponsoring it. I just released Monster tickets. Monster Energy be cutting checks, bro, bro. Hey, they out there cutting checks, oh, they man. They be cutting checks. I, I respect them. I respect <clears throat> them. Um, it's, just, it's just dope. Uh, it's just dope because we, like, leaned into this side of comedy that was not uh nobody really wanted to touch we were we're not being politically correct we are not being censored and it's cool to see uh brands recognize it and be like i want to be part of it yes i just hope that the brands that do that stick with it and don't get afraid if a little heat yes, comes yes that's the most important thing yes because i got some heat this week and by the way but i'm gonna tell you something <laughs> oh did I? i'm gonna tell you something i got in a lot of my contracts <laughs> what's that you can't if you get rid of me for some old shit yeah, yeah. i still want that goddamn check Oh, yeah, it's you not a violation known. of moral and standards clause because I ain't do shit now. Right, right, I was right. a fuckboy back then. Right, right. All right? Right. So right. if you if you get rid of me for some old shit, you still got to yeah. pay me. You should have done your Googles. That's what you got. You should have done your Googles. That's you know who you, but that's your clause. you know who you're signing up for, right? <laughs> exactly. You, yeah, know yeah, what the yeah, fuck, yeah. you know who the fuck you signing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Word up. Yeah, I mean, your brand is Monster. So. All right. How much of a monster do you want to be? <laughs> All right, I'm serious. So don't sign motherfuckers you think is monsters. But then when the heat comes, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. fuck out of here. You knew what it was. Uh, so basically, so basically, yeah, they're they're sponsoring uh, ten dates of uh, my new tour. Um, it's the Matador tour. You can go to theandrewschultz.com right now. Get tickets for that. Um, and I got some dates coming up for that. But um, and I'll basically tell you those right now. I'm on my website. So that tour starts June eighth. In San Francisco, then we're in Indianapolis, then we're in Cincinnati, then we're in Denver, then we're in Houston, then we're in Toronto, the Danforth Theater in Toronto, then we're in Washington, D.C., then we're in Chicago, Thalia Hall in Chicago, then we're in Boston, Massachusetts at the Wilbur Theater, and then New York City, November 22nd. <coughs> okay. Town Hall, man. I'm very excited about this. Um, you know, the New York Comedy Festival has never, uh, they just won't allow me to be in the New York Comedy Festival for some reason. Even so, now? Even now. They canceled my show last year. There's some like beef. It's really stupid how these comedy uh, people work, but I perform at the other comedy club that isn't Caroline's and the people who run Caroline's run. The other club was Gotham. 
And the people who run Caroline's run the festival, so they got a little petty about that shit. I've been hearing a lot of comedians complain about Caroline's, which is so interesting to me because every time I go to Caroline's, they show me mad love. Like Rip Michaels was on a Breakfast Club, yeah. and he was calling them racist and all. I'm like, huh? Well, because they want their acts to come to your show and promote their gigs, so they better be nice they to you. They treat me great. They better. <laughs> you selling tickets. You're out there selling tons of tickets. Point is, we're doing this show the week after the New York Comedy Festival got you. at uh, Town Hall. So, yo, go get those real quick. Let's sell out all these gigs, and then uh, I got I still got shows leading up to the Matter of Tour as I'm putting together this new tour. So I'll be in Cleveland this weekend, then Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin. We got Dallas, Nashville, Columbus, St. Louis, and uh, Detroit or Ann Arbor to suburbs. So go to theandrewshows.com, get all those tickets. We're back on the road, big shit happening, uh, and yeah. And yeah, salute to uh, Greg at Caroline's. Greg, be nice, make nice with Andrew. Okay. Oh, it's not Greg. It's not Greg. No, no. no oh, Greg, no. good money. Greg's good, but Greg's good people. So. Oh, okay, okay. I used okay. to perform at Caroline's. I was there. You were there. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, I started doing the other one because they, you know, they they offer more money. What you want to do? We would have let you match it. Business is business, baby. Always remember, there's no permanent friends or enemies when it comes to business. Exactly, man. So now we're gonna have to shut it down. All right. <laughs> Simple as that. We don't play around. All right. Where do we start, man? It's a lot to get to this week. Uh, if you're listening to this, the podcast is late. Um, brothers is busy you know what I mean but we're yeah. here on a Friday we're recording it is 11.46 in the morning still yeah so where do we start you want to start with the funeral of Nipsey Hussle um, I don't I mean do you want to talk about it I mean it was um, I thought that in the words of Tax Stone yeah um, legends never die no live the way uh. you, live the way your funeral popping you know what I'm saying? Live the kind of life the way you got a lit funeral. Okay. You know, okay. Yeah, he, yeah. he had a he had a he had a very lit celebration of life. Only the second artist ever to have a, a, a service at the Staples Center. The first was Michael Jackson. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, Nipsey never had a top ten, you know, single or anything like that. You right. know what I'm saying? I think the, the I think this is this week was the highest his one of his projects ever debuted on Billboard. And it was right. at like number two. Right. So that's a testament to, you know, it's really not about Record sales. Yeah. It's really not about hit records. It's really about the impact you can just make on people. Because yeah. that's one thing that I think people um we we forget to realize. You know, we're so we're so such a numbers era. Yeah, you know what I mean. That people are gonna people are not gonna really remember your record sales. They're not gonna really remember you know what what your songs charted. Yeah, but they will remember how you made them feel. So regardless of what area of life you're in, regardless of what you do, always, you know, remember how you're making people feel. I guarantee you it's a, a, a owner of a bodega or a restaurant growing up that you yeah. knew, that you remember how that person made you feel. With somebody in your life when you was young, you'll always remember that person because they I made you feel good. I remember all the teachers that affected me. See what I'm saying? Good or bad. You just remember how people made you feel. And you know what? I remember the good ones more. Yeah. It's hard for me to remember bad teachers, but the good teachers, and I bring that up because I think Nipsey in a lot of ways was a teacher for people. Uh, and it's, yeah, the good teacher, Mr. Appel in, I think, seventh grade, maybe realized I could do math. Um, Mr. Davis in eighth grade taught me pretty much everything I learned about American history See to this I mean? day. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Isn't that crazy? See like, what I mean? And the, th the, cra the crazy thing about people like Nipsey is... um. Some people were being taught and didn't even know they were being taught. Oh yeah, that's the best and, teaching. And, and you don't realize you don't realize that you know you've lost lessons until you lose that individual. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean, if you knew Nipsey and you have spoken to Nipsey or even listened to his music, you knew what he was about. You knew yeah. who he was. You know what I'm saying? You knew he, I, I've said it before plenty of times when he was alive. Yeah. This is a man that you can look up to literally and figuratively. Well, at least right. me because I'm right. five six. He's right. six three. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So he was out here teaching people through actions. Something that yeah. Lil Duval says all the time. Something that I feel like. You all, we all should establish. Show yeah. proved by actions and deeds, not words and lip service. There's too much motherfucking words and lip service nowadays. Too many motherfuckers talking Show, and not tell. enough people showing and fucking proving with actions. It's the Nipsey only thing sh people react to. That's it. What Everything else is just talk. Yeah. Nipsey he, showed and yeah. proved through actions. Yeah, yeah. His, his community service spoke for itself. The fact that, you know, people talk about buying back the block, buying back the hood. No, Nipsey actually... Did it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Literally. He did it and was doing it. And this wasn't a new phenomenon. He had that marathon stuff for 10 years. A right. a, a re more recently, he bought the whole strip mall. Right. So it's just like, yo, he showed and proved through actions indeed. So, I mean, that's my that's my biggest takeaway, man. You know, live your life to where you got a, a lit funeral and, you know, show and prove through actions and deeds. And that really is yeah. the best way to teach people. Because even if people don't acknowledge that they're learning from you, they are. 
Yeah. But we just live in this weird ass society where people got to wait until a person is deceased to feel comfortable saying, you know, I learned so much from them. Yeah. Which I think is whack. It is whack. But it is whack. There's a long live Nipsey. Well, Nipsey will be back. Explain. I, uh, yeah, I started believing in reincarnation this week. Really? Yeah. Why this week? I saw a picture of myself. Well, not of myself. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I saw a picture of, I posted on my Instagram. There's a picture of this like hockey player from way back in the day and for, played for the Montreal Habs. And it is so fucking uncanny, this guy's resemblance to me. I saw that. I mean, unfathomable, right? And it got me thinking about... Now, I don't think that I'm reincarnated as that person. I don't think you get reincarnated and look the same as the same person, but it got me thinking about reincarnation. And it got me thinking about the idea just of like coming back and le- living another life. And then I started to think about, it was like, like why do, why do I understand certain things about humanity that I can't explain to other people? Like, why does Duval understand life in a way that he can't even explain to some people? They Even when you try, they just do not get it. Mm-hmm. They just don't understand it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. um... I mean, the funny thing about Duval's philosophy, it's a philosophy that we've all heard for years. Well, we'll, we'll get there. Whether it's Hakuna Matata. We'll get there. It's don't worry, be happy. Yeah, but it's deeper than you that. It's like, it's like I'm saying like a fundamental understanding of existence. Like my competitive advantage in whatever field I've been has not been anything more than me understanding life and people better than other people. It's simple as that. Like if I try to break it down, it's like why am I able to solve problems better than other people in my field? Because I understand how people operate. Why do I understand that? It's it, and, and some people try to chalk things up to IQ. I don't even think it's IQ. I think it's experience living. I think, I think I've lived a lot of lives, and I think that, I and I think that you carry something with you every single life you live. Like you look at a guy like Nipsey, like and it's like, why the fuck does this guy have so much wisdom? Where does he get that from? Slauson and Crenshaw. It, yes. Why does he get that, but nobody else that grows up in the same environment get that? Because they're not embracing what they should be embracing. Like I told people, what allows morning? you to embrace it? Reading. Before, before we get into that, okay, yeah. what pushes you towards that, right? So I started thinking, like, why, 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 why does a guy like Lil Duval, who grows up in poverty, mm-hmm. no formal education why is he able to grasp these con- concepts that i sit down with guys who are like harvard fucking professors and they can't well well duval and nipsey have something that a lot of those harvard professors don't have which is life experience that's a not lot of time, a lot of harvard pre- professors have life experience no no i'll take let me, let me explain they have life experience but they have life experience in a very structured way meaning that they went to school they were always focused on the books a lot of their research and things that they absorb come right. from the books. Right. But I think experience is always the best teacher. There's a lot of different people who teach at Harvard, right? So there's people who have that kind of experience. There are people who have immigrated from fucking Iran and they've, you know, escaped the, you know, horrible atrocities. I was supposed to speak at Harvard teach. last Monday too. I missed my, the flight was delayed, so Boom. I didn't get done. So I guess the, to Harvard. the point is, the point is, I'm trying to say is like, I started looking at at the way that we observe life right and the way we observe even like video games like how do video games operate right you're a player you know sometimes that player dies and then you get to run it back and now you have more wisdom about the world that you're in so you get to live that life a little bit better Mm -hmm. and every single time you get a little bit further in this game it's like where do you think we came up with that idea as humans you know what I mean? It's like even the idea of reincarnation, that's our – like the, the Hindu people believe in reincarnation forever, right? Mm-hmm. It's you keep on living your life until you figure out what life is and then you end up in this state of nirvana, right? You figured it out. You beat the game of life. And I think the reason why we see it resonating in not only video games but also movies, movies keep – movies now are all about like taking your consciousness and passing it off into another body, living in another sleeve, as they called it in different things, continuing that life. Oh, what if I could take my brain and put it into a computer, right? So it's like we're we're understanding, I think, our existence in a way. I think I think we do get reincarnated. I think we don't know what happens to our energy when we die. We know for a fact energy cannot be created or destroyed. We know for it's a fact— It's merely lost or destroyed from one party to the next. Right? So it's like I think we're putting it back into people. I think that we not only put it back into people, I think it never goes anywhere. Here's a question. Do you ever do you ever feel we were talking about this on Flair too, but like do you ever feel like you're more mature than your parents? Yeah, but that comes with that that comes with the fact that we probably have been exposed to more than our parents. Or you're supposed to be that way. Or what? You're an older soul than them. 
I think you can be an older soul, but I think it also comes from just more experience in life. Like I'm, I had a passport. My mom just got a passport last year. Sure, you sure. know what I'm saying. So I, because of me, yeah. I'm able to help my mom see the world. Yeah. But that's how every generation is supposed to be. Sure. But sometimes you find a kid who's 15, 16, and he has this incredible calm. You know, he's an 18 year old kid. He has this incredible calm. I remember yeah, you little fucks. You don't pay no bills. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Because <laughs> you, you never had that fucking rent Maybe. due. Maybe. And you had to go out there and suck some dick to keep food on your kid's table. You know hey, what I'm hey, saying? Hey, that's life, bro. <laughs> that's life. You don't know how it is. It's easy for a 15 year old to be calm. Right. Your fucking mom is 26. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> And she out here scratching and surviving to make sure you good. All, all, right? all I'm saying is like, I think I, I, I don't know, I just believe in this idea. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think that it's completely possible that we get to run it back. And then there's new lives that are born. And those are like really infant and juvenile lives. And those are people that are fucking hard to communicate anything to. I mean, I like everything you said just now. I posted this on uh, Instagram this morning. I put, we come from energy and turn back into energy. We are all matter for only a very short time. Make sure that when you are matter, you matter. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like energy really never goes anywhere. Think about all the people that have that are deceased, that we never met, that we never experienced, but we're influenced by them in such major ways. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just because of the energy that they left behind, whether it was through literature, whether it was through music, whether it was sure. through art, like whatever it, whatever it is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I feel like energy never really goes anywhere. I also feel like the this is why I hate when people die young. The reason mm -hmm. I hate when people die young is because they never get a chance to learn anything new. You know what I'm saying? If you die at 15, you only knew what you knew up to 15 years old. Yeah. Think about all the shit you didn't know when you were 15. Yeah. Think about all the shit you thought you knew that you had to unlearn yeah. as you got older. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the worst part of dying young because yeah. I think that the whole meaning of life is to constantly keep learning, constantly keep experiencing new things. When you get to that point where you feel like you know everything, that's when I think you really start to die. I think the beauty of life is like just constantly learning things and unlearning things. I feel like that's what keeps you going. When I see somebody like Duvall, Duvall has two great concepts on life right. that I can't grasp quite yet. One very in particular is just the whole concept of death. You know what I'm saying? Duvall is very comfortable yeah. with death. You fear it. Yeah. You oh, need to because, it, because you need but, to but that's it. more so because I have kids. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be there to, to help them see their life right. all the way through. You know what I mean? Sure. Plus, I just feel like, I don't even know if I feel like I have a, if I have more to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable with that. Like, I'm really, I'm really living for my, my kids at this what point. What if you don't accomplish anything else? I'm good. Okay, so then there's yeah, no fear yeah, yeah. with that. I'm good. But I want to, I, I do, my, my biggest priorities right now are making sure at least I get to see my daughters grow up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm too old. I'll be too old to play with the grandkids, so that's on them. They can, you know, do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just want to see my kids grow sure, up. Sure, that's real. You know yeah, what I'm man, saying? Like, that. that is my thing. Duvall is just like, psh, whatever. And when I see situations... Not, not whatever. He just accepts that's part of life. Yeah, I can accept it when... I can accept it. I can accept everything but murder, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. No, 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 no. <clears throat> Let's not put words into his mouth. No, no. I'm speaking for me. Okay, okay. okay I can accept okay. everything but gotcha, murder. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know gotcha, what I'm saying? Gotcha. I can expect. I can accept a car accident. Right. I can accept illness. Yeah. I can accept drowning. Plane crash. I can accept all of that. Yeah. But when another person takes another human being's life, I just right. feel like they've been cheated. I uh, do. Hundred percent. But you know, you don't feel that way when you eat a hamburger. You know. Cows aren't here. For, the cows are here for that, as far as I know. <laughs> like, you know what like, I'm saying? Now, but, listen, so if, I ever, was, if we, I ever was we chilling. We decided that, though, right? Like, if you go to India, they've decided cows are gods. Maybe cows talk over there. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. There's got to be a reason they feel that way. Like, something has happened in India right. with cows that hasn't happened here. Now, if the cows were like the cows on the Chick-fil-A commercial where they was like, bro, yeah, yeah. eat more motherfucking chicken. We're really yeah. people. I'm like, damn. Yeah. I respect you, cow. I'm not going to eat you. What if you, what if you like, what if maybe they're looking at cow like this, like this perfect animal, right? It's like they take a shit and that shit fertilizes the ground, which creates, you know, a, f a fertile environment for vegetables to grow. And then they can eat the vegetables. It's like, why would you kill this thing that gives you life? All purpose creature, baby. It, right? It fucking gives you milk. milk. It gives you motherfucking fertilizer, fucking hamburgers, steak. No, like, you can't eat that shit because then it won't what? give you no fertilizer. Oh, you got plenty of them. They ain't extinct. Cows ain't going no Dude, motherfucking Yo, way. I'm telling you, bro, they, you, you got to admire Indians, man, because these motherfuckers are starving and there's cows walking around everywhere, bro. 
Imagine that. <laughs> Just think about there are people starving, begging on the street, and hamburgers are walking around everywhere. Might be giving them too much credit. What the beef recipes like over there? Might not be a lot of them. They know how to cook a oh, steak up. There's zero of them. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you send the fucking beef cook over there and show them what they can do with that cow. That Might change Peter their Luger. whole culture. Send Peter Luger over there, and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> Start <laughs> hacking away I'm at these things. I'm telling you, so you change the whole culture when you get that filet mignon, baby. Right. But I guess, the, I guess the point is, like, we just decide what's right or wrong. And I think, you know, uh, Duval and, and, and people of that ilk will— accept kind of life as it is every philosopher i know uh accepts death every single life man there's not there's not one self-help book i've read i I just finished reading a great book what's the name of this book it's called unlearn i want to shout the author out i literally just finished it last night and he 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 talks about like the concept of accepting death what's dude name his name is uh my humble the poet Mm -hmm. you know and like it's just everybody, Malcolm Gladwell, all these guys have just a concept of just accepting de- death. And I guess you really have no There's choice. There's no way around it, Charlemagne. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah, makes yeah. it out alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody. Yeah, you're right. Right? You're Nobody. Right. I'm not accepting it. You don't have to. I don't have to, but it will be mean? back. Hopefully I never leave. That's the, that, that's the type of life you want to live, right? You want to live that life the way it never leaves. Like you, when your energy is here forever, when your art outlives you. Right. That's th- what you want to do. Could you accept? Could you accept that that might not happen? Could you accept that uh, that you'll be forgotten? No. Why not? Because I've what the fuck am I here for then? What am I doing all this content and fucking writing books and shit for? Are you doing it for when you're dead? Um. Why not? Why yeah. not? Why not enjoy the fuck out of it while you're here? Why not be out? I am. Be outcome based. Be process. No, I, I am enjoying it, but I mean that's the whole thing. Like they are, with any art, they say you create things that you hope to outlive you. With any art, what if it doesn't? Does then it make your sucks. Does it make your life any less important? Any less no, valuable? Not to the people that matter. I don't think so. But wouldn't you be upset if your jokes didn't slap a hundred years from now? I don't know if they don't. They don't. I don't care. If, as long as I'm enjoying the fuck out of them, and as long as like right, this listen, life is dope, I'm yeah. with you. But just uh, just 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 yeah, hypothetically, yeah. we will be forgotten. But what if we listen? Wait for it. Hi- we will okay, be forgotten. Well, hypothetically, bro. what if we in the afterlife? All there was some. There was two dudes back in the day, just like us, that had a dope ass. It wasn't a podcast. They were just talking in public, <laughs> talking, talking around a campfire. They were talking around a campfire, <laughs> telling ill stories, man, like the craziest shit. Dick talk, dick segment. <laughs> campfire was lit. That shit wasn't recorded. <laughs> that shit wasn't recorded. But the niggas that wrote the Bible. Ooh. 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 Them two motherfuckers with their stories was slapping. Somebody told that story about that snake creeping up on Shorty and was like, yo, eat that apple, girl. All right? <laughs> that should be you a told that shit seem mad sexual. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that snake creeping Listen, up on Shorty. Whoever made, the story about apple, no- whoever made the story about Noah's Ark? <laughs> slapping, bro. Ooh. That's all I'm saying. You can right. create some art that lasts forever. No, you got to create a printing press. Printed press? A printing press. Oh. That's what made it last forever. Yeah. But I'm just saying, what if we all in the afterlife just chilling, right? Right. It's me, you, and Duvall. We sitting around. Right. Um, hundred years from now. Right. We looking at what's going on down here. Right. Smile bitch still going. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Smile bitch still going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody watching an old ass Breakfast Club interview, reading the book, but they don't remember none of your good jokes. You wouldn't feel a little way? I'm okay with it. Well, we're going to fuck with you about that now. I'm fine right? with it. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I enjoyed the fuck out of it. And matter of fact, I wonder if like, I wonder. Yeah, We I guess, say that, but then we say live in the moment. Taylor said no, we should no, live no. in the moment. So here's what's confusing about living the moment, right? Talk to me. Is, uh, and, uh, is what if your moment sucks? Word up. <laughs> right? Like, we be saying that to people starving to death. Like, just embrace it and live in the moment. Yeah. Which know? moment? Yeah. Which moment do you want me yeah, to live in? Because like, I've had better moments. It's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's some moments I don't want to live in, okay? With some moments, I'm cool with this yeah, one. You're getting your shit kicked out of you. You just got to live in this moment. Feel it. I mean, no, take it no, in. No, seriously, imagine if this was like a Marvel comic and it was a time loop. Yeah. And you had to just keep living this shit over and over. That one moment that was fucked up. I don't right. want to live in this moment. So it's not like, so live in a moment is misinterpreted, right? What it, right. So, but what I'm trying to say is, living a moment is just a way of of making be process oriented, digestible. Meaning, like fall in love with making art, not in the reaction to it. 
right? Because how many people do we know are making shit that's not art, but there's a big reaction? You know what I mean? Like, there's so many motherfuckers that are doing shit that's not art. They're going to be forgotten. They're going to be forgotten to me. They already are. They already are. We already, we know exactly Exactly. who we're talking about. I don't, but I know what you're talking, I know what you're talking about. You know why I don't know who you're talking about? Why? Because I forgot him. (laughs) I'm being honest with you. I'm being totally honest. I know exactly what you're talking about. I just can't remember who the fuck we're talking about in this moment. So they spent all this time trying to get reaction and not loving what they did. And what a waste of your fucking life. Bye. You, like, died, you died with whatever app you was doing that shit on. That's it. If you was a Vine guy, you're dead. dead. You don't fuck with Vine no more, bone. You Snapchat, you don't fuck with that no more. All that shit is done. Why do you think we still do this? <clears throat> I love doing it. Yeah. That's why I do it. I love doing it. Yeah. Like, I stopped looking at numbers year, uh, years ago. I never looked at them. I, ne- I look, I did initially because I defined myself by how big an episode was and I defined myself by what it brought. But once I'd let go of that shit and just was like, I like coming in here and f- arguing with this motherfucker, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And just, just creating cool ideas, creating cool hypotheticals. Yeah. Like once I gotten, I just fell in love with that part of it. Oh yeah, man. I mean, you get into it when you hear about, it's, it's, it's natural to get into it when somebody says, we're competitive motherfuckers. Yeah. When yes. somebody says, oh, this show is big or whatever, it's natural to we look at it. But, Yes. Who gives a fuck? Bro. I want to say something else about enjoying the moment. Oh, go. It's it's it's, it's bullshit from a religious uh religious perspective too. Okay, go. Because they teach you about heaven and hell, right? They're setting the outcome yeah, up. Yeah, so, so you you have to live a certain way in order to get this certain outcome. So how can I ever live in the moment? So you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Do you think maybe that was there? You think that like <clears throat> the heaven and hell concept, right? So let's imagine there are these people and they're like, okay, there's no heaven and hell, mm-hmm. right? But they're like these enlightened individuals and they're like, but I know for a fact if you live life this way, if you give to others and look at, and treat others how you want to be treated and you're kind and you don't covet that neighbor's life, you do all these things, they know for a fact that you will live a better life. You'll live a yes. more joyful life. You'll have heaven on earth. Right. So You like, can have heaven on earth based on the decisions you make here. Right. So heaven and probably, hell on earth based they on probably what you started, did. They probably started like, hey, don't you know covet that neighbor's life and be kind to people and be generous and all this kind of shit shit and people are like man fuck all that i ain't gonna do all that shit and then like all right how do we convince them to do it if you don't you go to hell yeah, if you do yeah, you go yeah, to heaven yeah, yeah. but literally they're going this is for you you idiot yeah. do this so you feel good not me yeah and i yeah. you see people who embrace it think think about how many of, of like our friends even that are in dark places yes and but by the way a lot of friends that i have that are in dark places are not even just friends but people, just people you know. i know it's because of the choices that they've made they've done dark shit that has come back to them now the law of energy is very confusing to me as well especially when i see things that you know like like what happened with nipsey but you also have to remember that you know um sometimes you can submit your will to the so-called god in you or you can submit your will to the so-called devil in you some people choose to vibrate at a higher frequency and some people choose to vibrate at a lower frequency yeah and if you choose to vibrate at a lower frequency you do lower bull dumb shit and sometimes us vibrate at a higher frequency gotta interact with your stupid ass because that's the way earth is designed yeah you know what i mean there is no segregation on earth there should be right? it should be it should be people with a higher frequency we're in the caribbean where the weather's always nice right. california yeah, people yeah. with a lower frequency cold places <laughs> all right you got to live in these fucking up north canada you got to live in these cold alaska yeah. like send all the people vibrating on a lower frequency yeah. to the cold places people vibrating on a higher frequency should be in the warmer places that way the world will be a much better place and what if what if what defines your frequency is how many lives you've lived what if higher frequency is you've been reincarnated hundreds of times and lower is you've only been here a few times? I, listen, I I absolutely believe in reincarnation in some way, shape, or form. Right. Um, whether it's, I feel like energy never leaves. That's what leaves. I'm saying. Nipsey will be back. That, that's why I'm not worried about that. Like, I mean, he, I, I don't think he's ever going to leave, but I also think he's he'll, if he's got kids. Plus, once your energy gets into other people, yeah. Then that means your idea. Yeah, your you're in the thoughts. ecosystem. Oh, you're in the, the ecosystem you're forever. In the matrix. Like That's his it. mom said that, and that was the illest thing. His mom was like, his body, his spirit is free from the physical form. Right. 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 right are we right. are we lying when we say he's bigger than he's ever been? Without a doubt. It's not even close. Without a doubt. Like he's bigger than he's ever been. He died in a very tragic way. Right. He's he's everything Jesse Smollett was trying to be with his fake hate crime. Mm. All right. Yeah. But sadly, when you really want to be immortalized, yeah, that's 
what happens. Yeah. Why well, I, I hate that. That's the way it is. But you have to. I don't want to say you have to go out tragically, but a lot of times if you go out tragically, that's when you become immortalized. Nothing has a greater impact in, on life than death. Tra- and, and tragic death. Especially tragic death. But like, if you want to talk about, I mean, let's, let's talk about making change. Mm-hmm. The only real way to make change is through death. Yeah. Like when you really break it down, yeah, well, what creates immediate impactful change? Risking it all, baby. Risking it all. Risking it all ain't going unprotected in a random. Risking Busting it all inside. is dying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is, you look at wars and like, you want to look at what changed the landscape of the world? Oh, yeah. War. And war isn't, hey, let's work it out over some tea. Yeah. It's yeah. death. You know, it's interesting. That's interesting you say that because a lot of people say that, you know, a guy like Nipsey is risking life and limb being in the hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Setting up shop in the middle of his hood the way that he did. You know, mm-hmm. being out there with no security, just living life, being one with the people. They right. say that's a risk. That's risking your life. And I mean, that's where he died. So yeah. technically he was taking that kind of risk. So you do have to be willing to to risk it all in that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it's really interesting to see the reaction. This. It's just really interesting to see the reaction from people. It's like, it's like we've seen this story happen so many times, mm-hmm. but this is the first time where there's been this universal reaction, which was, "Yo, why the fuck are we even doing this?" Yeah, and it's, it's, like it's, this, it's, it's this giant mirror. It's, it was yeah. almost like we accepted other people dying in this way, but we refused to accept Nipsey. Like we saw something unique about Nipsey. It was pure. Maybe that's it. He was it. genuine. Yes. He was really a good dude. Show me a video where Nipsey's wildin'. Show me a video where Nipsey's on some rah-rah. Show me a video where Nipsey's like, fuck you, I'm going to kill you. Show me that. Right, right. You, you, you're not going to find it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Even when you would ask him about other people, he'd be like, yeah. man, I don't want to speak on that. Prayer. And he wouldn't even speak ill of people. So t- that's right. the reason, because he's so pure and so genuine. Okay, this is bad. I don't even want to go towards this, but like. That means you should do it. Okay. But <laughs> like, I'm sure they put a lot of people on crosses back in the day. You know, Jesus wasn't the first person they put on a cross. Uh, he was up there with two other people, right? It was two other. But people. we don't remember those one other on guys. One on one side of him, one on the other side, right? We don't remember those other guys, and they were and they were up there. I'm sure for you know not following the religious rules of the day or not doing exactly what they should have been doing. The bars didn't slap. The bars didn't slap. Right? That their last suppers were weak. So maybe there's something like you said about purity. <clears throat> Right, we're affected when when the pure ones go. It's easier for us to accept the death, like when we, when some like mobster dies that we know is responsible for like you know a few bodies himself. We we get it. We go, hey, that's that's a casualty of the dice game, right? Yo, rest in peace, Pac. Rest in peace, Pac. And I mean this in the most respectful way. Right. Pac got into a fight with a crip before he got killed. Right. They say that's the crip that allegedly shot him. And killed him. That's right. cause. That's effect. Right. We understand that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's sad, it's tragic. Right. We lost a great human being. We can understand that cause and effect. Yo, right. Even if Nipsey had been fighting this guy in the parking lot, if Nipsey had slapped the dude and dude came back, bust, anything, anything like that, you can like, damn, that's fucked up. But you can accept it a little bit more. Cause and effect. You know what I'm saying? We just saw effect and it doesn't that's make it. sense. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and whatever the cause was, it's like, nah, yeah, yeah. And bruh. our brains are trying to write the equation, right? Our brains are trying to go, what the fuck Mm-mm. could make this happen? Mm-mm. And maybe that's what it is. Mm-mm. All I'm saying is this guy's had it like a massive effect. You know? It, it, I just wanted to last because here's the thing. It will die. That, that's part of it. Like the uh, effect see, will see, slow that, down. That's what, that's what pisses me off because Nipsey Hussle is going to be dead forever. Right. So all of this kumbaya, my lord, you know, unity and love and everybody need to do more for their communities. Yeah, yeah. This shit can't be over next month because we know, we see how we move. It will. And that's fucked up. It will. And I, But I'm interested to see if it does and I'm going to yeah. tell you why. Everything else that we talk about, how shit moves, like you talk about January, it was Soldier Boy, and February, it was fucking Justice Smollett, and yeah. uh, uh, March, it was Michael Jackson and, and R. Kelly, or maybe, I don't even fucking remember now, but, right. and then April bought the Nipsey tragedy, yeah. right? This is, a, this is something different. Like, all of that other stuff is like, all right. Small potatoes. Small potatoes moment. Somebody lost their life, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Somebody lost their they man. Somebody lost their father, a son. Like, yeah. I think this is going to have a different effect. I yeah. do. I think it's gonna last. I think it's gonna last a little bit longer because people are really like, "Y'all gotta go get my Nipsey on," and not only just get their Nipsey on, appreciating 
the other brothers in the community that are moving like a Nipsey Hustle. Because Nipsey, I wear this chain on my neck all the time. This is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I think everybody should read Message to the Black Man because everything that Nipsey was doing is things that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would say to do. Right. Do for self. Right. You know what I'm saying? Build your own community. Build your own economies. Build your own ecosystems. You got brothers like Killer Mike doing that. Right. You got brothers like David Banner doing that. You Who's got guy in Houston? Trade the truth. Trade the, Trade the truth, truth yeah, is out yeah. there, you know, doing that. Like you got, but not even just the, the rappers. You got regular everyday people who are doing these things in right. their communities every single day. It can be done. Only thing people need to learn is finances. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and where to put your money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And 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 what to invest in. Like look what Envy's doing with his real estate. What's Envy doing? Envy owns mad real estate properties. Like, you go to Envy's Instagram, all his Instagram is about is his flipping New Jersey project. He's been doing that for months. And really? I see the inspiration that he's providing to people. Right, I right, see right. other artists. I see athletes, people who got money, calling Envy saying, yo, where should I invest? What should I do? And he's showing improvement through actions and deeds. He didn't jump out there and start preaching to people, right. saying, hey, you should do this, you should do that. He just started doing it. Right. And if you follow him on Instagram, you're like, oh, shit, Envy's really... About this real estate life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It may, even makes me wonder. I was talking to Duval about this yesterday. I'm like, damn. I've never been a stunner. <clears> but <throat> if I do start stunting, should we yeah. stunt different? Meaning like... Yo, yeah, bro. But I'm what saying... Do you think Duval's whole shit... Duval no, flexes. Duval be, he be stunting like a nigga. Yeah, no. Yeah, he no, does. he doesn't. Schultz, he, no, he, he does No, he does Y'all don't on. understand the subtlety of him. I, there's no subtlety with Duval. It is. He had a fucking iced out toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but the iced you know, out, iced out to oh, I forget the iced out toilet is satire, right? It's making fun of. It is. It's making fun of people who are wasting their money on that jewelry. But his house in the Bahamas. The stunt is the plane. The, oh no 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 the planes or whatever. But that's the stunt. You got three of them now. Okay, but the he just stunt, bought another one. Yes. <laughs> so the stunt is the plane, right? Like the subtle stunt. It's like the stunt is traveling and doing these things that you never see people like yourself doing, right? Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Like that's the stunt. Yeah. You know, so it's not doing the stupid shit like buying jewelry that's just a waste. It's buying an experience in another part of the world that you can never. We'll travel is beautiful. Away. I'm all for travel. I think that, you know, we should all travel. It humbles you. Everybody should have to go back to wherever their fucking family's from for one year. I really believe that. Oh, so yeah. you realize so how spoiled we are in America, bro. Oh. We are so fucking wildly spoiled here, every Absolutely. single one of us. Absolutely. If we just spent one year back wherever our ancestors Absolutely. are from, we would be so grateful. Because all of us, regardless of what race we are, are living, or sexuality or anything, are living... In the best place for us, yes. we none of us can go anywhere and it gets better. How yes. crazy is that and to think you, about? If, and if you don't believe me, and we complain more than anyone. If you don't believe us, get a time stone and go back to the sixties. Don't get a time stone. <laughs> right. Get a jet blue okay. flight. Go anywhere you want. Use your miles. You can go anywhere you want, and you will freak out without your Wi-Fi. Nah, you right. freak out without your your, your vegan you're diet, right. your right. gluten free diet. Bro, you're right. There's no gluten free. Bro, do you understand that we have the uh, ability and the the freedom to complain? Son, yes, that. that's what we I'm have, saying. We have the ability, and we you use know, it some more places, than anywhere else. Yes, and you know, in some bro, places, they don't even have the freedom to complain. Son, complain yes. if you want to, you'd be bro, dead out this motherfucker. That's it's over for you. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, are yeah, yeah, all yeah. living the. That's why, like, you know how generous the American government is to all of us. Yeah, like what the American government could literally look at <coughs> every single one of us when we're complaining and go, "Where you gonna go?" No, 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 no. Where the fuck no. you gonna even go? Even better, even better. The American government can look at us complaining and say, you know what? Ship him off some Ship his way. ass back. <laughs> Ship his ass back. You know, I'm Asian and I'm proud. We're gonna see how proud. <laughs> We're gonna see how proud you are when we send your ass back to Asia. <laughs> Asia kind of lit though, right? Okay. You try to live with two billion. Asia lit, Chris? Lit. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you, listen, 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 let me tell you, listen, all, hey, all due respect to Asia, this is how not lit Asia is. Chris goes every year and comes back. I don't, Chris, you coming don't, back. Why don't if you coming well, back, it cannot be whoa, that whoa, lit. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't think they want whoa. a white man out there? Listen, listen. A nice Jewish white listen. man? Listen, he, he, he did you bring, don't think listen, want that? So he did bring back a wife. 
That says a lot. No. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> he didn't bring her back. He met her here. Oh, he met her here. I'm yeah. saying, I don't know. Just, they got Asians My here story's too. better. Let's Chris, go. Went, Chris went to Asia and loved it so much. Son. He brought back a wife. Son. You can't. You can't live. You can't do anything better. What can you do better than that? Son. that that's better than adopting, bro. bro. <laughs> I'm serious. All these white people that adopt little black kids. Oh, please. You know what I'm saying? From from Africa and Haiti. Please. Chris bought a whole wife back, bro. A whole wife right, back. Listen, okay. Uh, yeah. Since this is my wife, she was born in uh, Oakland, grew up in Amherst, Massachusetts. Oh. She's an American. He's just saying that because yeah. you know how Trump is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trump will get her up out of here if we find out. <laughs> you are, you're not the first to assume that uh, she is Asian. You she's know. not from Asia. From well, no, Asia. she's Asian, she's but Asian. she's not born in oh, Asia. Oh, gotcha. Asian American, right? You know, gotcha, like gotcha, you're gotcha. African, you're not born in Africa. Ninety-seven percent right. West African. That's what's up. Now, a part of me was born. In, uh, one of me was born in West Africa at some point. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I could have yeah. been born there too. But you could have. But I mean, all life starts in Africa. Is that right? I mean, I don't know. That's what I was That's told. what we all say. Yeah. What if all life just starts in, like, Russia? <laughs> what if we find out that we're all white if we go back far enough? <laughs> Taylor don't want none of it. <laughs> Taylor don't want none of it. Listen, I do want to go back to the stunting spoiled, thing, though, right? Spoiled, bro. Only, yo, I, yo, we're so spoiled, Sean. <coughs> we are. It's fucking shocking. We st- we're spoiled and we got too much freedom. I've been saying that for and a long we time. We complain the most. Think about what the rest of the world must look at us and seeing us bitch over stupid shit in America. Like pronouns. No, the beautiful, the most beautiful Use thing in the, the world. Use the right pronoun. When you t- are you fucking kidding me? I, w- I was having a conversation with Trevor Noah yesterday. People man. don't even have water. Trevor was talking about, you know, even coming from Africa, he had a different perception of America, and he was talking about TV, right? Yeah. And he was saying how sister, sister, sister was just like murder. She wrote to him. Yeah. He didn't look at it from a race perspective. Right. He just he just looked at it from an American. Perspective, you know what I'm saying? So I'm I, confused. Sister, sister, and murder. She wrote were it, the same show. To us, it's like out of no. They weren't even close yeah. to being the same show. But to him, they it's, were just uh, that was just America. That was just the way America was. You had you, you you saw things like sister to sister, and you saw things like murder. She wrote, and he said it made him think that America was 50 percent black, 50 percent white. Yo, that's what everyone in the world thinks. Yes, and including black people in America. Right. Black people in America like think it. it's 50 50. No, we act like it. We do act you like do. it. You <laughs> do? We do act like it. Which sounds a lot, though. Yeah. We do act like it. We For do sure. act like it. Yeah, yeah. We do act like it. But I, I, was, I was talking about stunting as far as like. Wait, but what was his thing? What was Trevor's thing about? I don't even remember what the fuck he was talking about. Oh, yeah, I called him an immigrant. He is an immigrant. I know. He, kn- he knows he is too, but he just said he never looked at it like that because of the perception of immigrants that America has. I look at him like that. Every time he complains about how shitty America is, I'm like, fam. Do you look at Drake? <laughs> fam. Drake what? is definitely an immigrant. Yeah, do you look at Drake like that? Yes. Justin My Bieber's mom an immigrant. is an immigrant. <laughs> yes. She cuts it. What do you mean? Do I look at it? It's just definitionally, don't look at Drake like an immigrant? Nah. He's from Canada. He but they says don't look I'm at from it like the that. six. They don't look at it like that. I don't think so. I don't think they look at Drake, the Justin Bieber's, the Trevor Noah's. I don't think they look at them as immigrants. Drake's an immigrant. Sandra Cameron, my mom is an immigrant. Mm-hmm. If you're not born here and then you come here, you're an immigrant. Yeah, I don't think people look at it like that. I think it's because of, I think now when people think immigrants, especially illegal immigrants, yeah. they think of Mexicans. Yeah. I really feel that way. I really feel when you hear the word immigrant, that's all you think about is Mexicans. Yeah, and maybe I have a different perspective because my mom is an immigrant, so mm-hmm. I probably see other people as immigrants as well. Yeah, you know, I, 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 just I, come here. My, one of, I, I was talking to him and I said something to him about you. You know how nice we are in America? We let people from other countries come here and then do TV shows where they complain about how shitty America is. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Do you think an American could go to South Africa and just trash South Africa four nights a week on TV? Do you really think that they would allow an American could go to North Korea? And just start a TV show. Why the and fuck just, would you want to do TV in North Korea? South Africa, I can see you want to do TV I'm saying hypothetically, there. like, oh. w- w- imagine American having his own TV <clears throat> show in any other country in the world, and the point of the TV show was just to trash the country. I'm going to have Trevor come on the podcast. We'd be kick, they'd kick him right the fuck out of the country immediately. They would not kick him out. And we celebrate it. They We're like, not. oh, God, John Oliver, you've made, brought such good points they about healthcare. They would not kick him out, Schultz. They would put him in prison. Immediately. <laughs> All right. Fam, Especially immediately. in North Korea. Fam, bro, right. Julian Assange, the WikiLeaks guy, right? Yeah. This guy literally just trashed America 
right? In America. He, and he didn't even trash America. He exposed our own fuck shit. Yeah. He literally was like, yo, do you see how fucked up we are? And then we were like, yeah, you got to get arrested for that. <laughs> like, this is nuts. This is n- that's how you know none of these guys are saying shit. Like this what uh, people are so goddamn phony. Like people act like these the Trevor Noahs, the John Olivers are these like truth tellers. They're the I, truth I, tellers. When you really tell real truth, yeah. you go to prison. Or you got to get locked well, up no, in the Ecuadorian fucking No, that's thing. just because we're in America. You're telling soft-ass truth. That's, a, that's only because we're in America. America got freedom of speech. No, I know. But what yeah, I'm saying yeah. is if you want to talk that real shit, like wh- whether whether you like Alex Jones or not, I think he's a maniac or not, right? And he's wrong about so many things. Mm-hmm. He's wrong about so many things, right? He's right about enough things where people are like, yo, cut that guy off. No, I think he's wrong about enough things to where people are like, cut this guy off. Son, they don't, cu- they don't cut off. They don't cut off the people who just say absurd shit that aren't right about nothing. No, nowadays they do. Like who else? Shit, Alex Jones is the first, but I've been seeing that lately where if you just have these outlandish... I don't know if it's how outlandish... I really think it's about how much people complain. Like if you say things like Sandy Hook... Sandy Hook was a hoax or he's 9-11 a, he's was a hoax. absurd. I'm yeah, not yeah, saying yeah, that these yeah, things, yeah. Are, they're not absurd, yeah. right? But all I'm saying is the people that are acting like they're these big truth tellers on TV and they're exposing the healthcare industry and they're exposing, it's like you exposing a pussy shit. Like you exposing the easy shit that everybody is cool with. If you, you know, really want to go for it, you really want to go for it, the government will knock on your door like, hey, chill. You know, you know, uh, I don't want to give away too much, but I was having a conversation with one of these people we're talking about. And I was asking them about, you know, their 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 platform being an echo chamber mm-hmm. and about them pandering. You were talking to Trevor. To, 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 to one audience. Go you know on. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And he basically said that every platform is an echo chamber. Not mine. No, I'm going to tell you why that's the truth. Because once you have... Once you have your audience, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Once you have your audience of people that fuck with you, mm-hmm. those are people that are there. The only way to not be an echo chamber mm-hmm. is to go places where your audience is not completely. Every week on this, right now there's somebody on this podcast that's listening right now in their car at work and they're they're going, bullshit, because every week Schultz drives me fucking crazy. Yeah, but, but someone else is going, bullshit, because every week Charlamagne drives me crazy. Why is that? Because every week... One of us is challenging something somebody believes and the other person challenging something. This was so unique about this podcast. I don't think people realize how fucking wildly unique Guys this like is. Guys like Trevor get challenged, though. What I'm saying, he actually gave a very good answer have, when he when they asked him about the Tommy Lawrence situation, and he spoke about why he has conservatives on and people who don't think like him on. He was like, "Yo, I want my ideas. He should to be challenged. He should. I yeah. mean, absolutely. All I'm saying is, what we do on a weekly basis is one of the most unique things in entertainment. I still it, think we have a lot of people that fuck with us. Though we no, no, have no. a we have a brilliant Sorry. idiot massive that tunes in every week we've and knows curated, we're going to say some wild shit. Yeah, we've curated yeah. right. We've curated a group of people that can listen to things they don't agree with. Yes. But that doesn't mean they're not being challenged by those things. Their brains are being stretched every single day. What we're doing in media, right? Do we have, have a chamber, though. Listen, listen. It's it's a chamber, but it's not an echo chamber. Because even with, guys, not, like, no, with, with guys like us and Alex Jones, right. it's not until outsiders come in who've never heard the rhetoric. That, they, that shit starts to go, exactly. oh my They're God. like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. But our people every week, they're like, that's just them. What the fuck are y'all tripping off? Right, because, but they're going in there and they're hearing ideas they don't necessarily agree with. Whereas mm-hmm. most people, right, the way that <coughs> CNN works, the way that Fox News works, is most people have a feeling and then CNN and Fox News go on TV and they, they justify and cater to yeah. that feeling, right? What we do is people have a feeling and we might cater to it or we might bash it. And then every week you might be infuriated or you might feel like we really touch your soul. What I'm saying we, is I think we touch on the multitude of all our feelings. Yes, we do. But I don't think you feel one, I don't think nobody feels one thing about something. Charmin, 100% 100% factual. Mm-hmm. But what we're doing is so unique in media. It's unbel- we might be the only the only group that is this unique in media that's operating on it because you have completely polarized opinions. And that's why shit has gotten really crazy. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I love Bill Maher, bro. It's not there. I'm telling you, bro. Bill Maher, like, you know why I like Bill Maher? Because Bill Maher is supposedly supposed to be a liberal. Yeah. But 
He challenges liberals every. He calls liberals pussy. Yeah. He says all y'all fucking do is apologize. Yeah. This is why y'all can't get right. Like he challenges that shit yeah. every week. And when he does, when he has his panels, yeah. he's challenging the people on the panels every week. Bill is saying something that pisses somebody the fuck off. Okay, good. I, I, I'll I'll get behind no, I Bill. Fu- I ain't gonna front. I f- Bill might be the only one. I get behind Bill. Uh, all right, I'm I'm fine with that. But his audience is a little. Uh, preachy. Like, if he just says, religion is stupid, then the audience goes, oh, it's my time to clap now. Bill don't even believe in God. I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, if he yeah. says that, his audience is, <clears throat> is built to do it. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is, we're not dumb people, you and I. Like, uh, we know how to... <laughs> fair enough. We yeah, do yeah. some brilliant <laughs> idiots, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but my point is, like, if you and I wanted to sit down, right, and we wanted to target a specific group with a specific ideology, right, like these most of these TV shows, shows do, mm-hmm. and we want to cater and pander to that, we could have the biggest platform in the fucking world. It, it would not be difficult for us to do that at, at all. We come in here, curate the ideas, mm-hmm. lean into them with the greatest way and the greatest passion, the greatest fervor, and then we would have the biggest platform. We could do that. We are sacrificing that because we care about our perceived truth, and we care about authenticity. I would just like the record to show that Brilliant Idiots is still one of the biggest podcasts in the world, uh, even with our potentially dangerous rhetoric. Okay, thank That's you. how dope it is. Yeah, yeah. But it's going to push out the casuals, some of them. That's we, fine. And I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. All I'm saying is we know how this operates. That's why when people like, you know, when even with guests, like y'all want to have such and such guests on the show, I don't like having guests on Brilliant Idiots. Sometimes they're nice. Sometimes, I, I think we've had really cool. But I guests. like this. Yes, I'm not gonna lie. I like the, I like this dialogue, right, yeah. motherfucking. Think fear. about how rare that is too, that we are not guest dependent. Mm-hmm. People even like people really don't know how fucking dope we are. We we are not guest dependent. Meaning there are certain podcasts. If the guests ain't popping, you ain't listening. A hundred percent. Simple as that. Yeah, most of them. Most of them. I'm not gonna say most of them. No, that's why. I, that's why I love to read. And I mean, I'm. I'm. That's why I love Joe Budden, because it's like I can listen to them without them having a guest on. You know what I'm saying? I just like to hear what they have to say about things. That's just the truth to the matter. I want to talk about stunting though. My, my, go, go. No, when I was just saying, like, you know, we talk I just about had stunting. To stunt for us a little. I had to that's flex how for I us. You saw that Ain't subtle flex. That? That's how you subtle flex. That's how you do all. But sometimes, you, <laughs> but but sometimes you want to you want to show people things because you feel like they need that inspiration. Because you think about when you've seen all the jewelry that people have shown us over the years, and made people go buy a bunch of jewelry. Cars, right. made people go buy a bunch of cars. When you see people buy, when you see people investing into properties and. You know, commercial real estate. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it makes you, it makes you like, damn, should I, should I show people this? Like I just closed on another building this week, a commercial you did. property. Yeah, where yeah. about? In Mount's Corner. You Get know what I'm saying? Because you know, Mount's Corner. People don't even realize my hometown is the fourth fastest growing town in South Carolina, and my county, Berkeley County, is the second fastest growing state in South Carolina. South Carolina is booming. Like all of these people go down there with their big ass companies, and fucking, you know, the cost of living is low. Like Google got like six plants in South Carolina. Wow. Google got a fucking Plant in Monk's Corner. You know what I'm really? saying? Yeah, People yeah. don't know that. Like, you got these car companies like, you know, Volvo. Volvo's opening up a huge plant down there in 2020. So you got these places that are just plopping these big-ass headquarters down. Right. People are moving there. All of these new neighborhoods are sprouting up. What's next? Right. What's next is all these corporations coming, because Monk's Corner's already booming with corporations, is coming with all these different properties. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yo, why not buy up a bunch of commercial real estate? Why That's not great. buy up all the brick and mortar we can? You know what I mean? Because whenever I'm out of town and I'm on vacation and I'm sitting around just talking talking to a random white guy at the pool and I'm asking him like you know we talking about what we do every single time regardless of what they do they're telling me how yeah man I just you know, I, my real estate pays for shit like this you know I got commercial real estate I bought a building here and then Walgreens came and bought my building and leased it for the next 15 30 years 8 grand 10 grand a month how the fuck what this you, you're good you know so what I'm saying? Cool. Man, so so, we, so it's like that's the kind of stuff I feel like let me speak we on need that to show quick. people. Because this is, first of all, very, very smart that you share that, but two things. You know how we say to white people all the time, we're like, hey, talk to minorities, ask questions, yeah. learn about these people so that you can <clears throat> not seem ignorant within their spaces, mm-hmm. right? Don't be afraid and pull back. Like literally learn, have conversations. Minorities do that with white people. Soak oh, yeah. up game. If you're at the pool and there's some white guy next to you, 
and you guys are talking and you find out what he does for a living, soak up the game. Yeah, and I've If been, he's telling giving you real estate tips, that's gold. That shit probably took him yeah. 40 years to acquire. And he gave you that shit in two in seconds. Two, so soak up like in the same way you want other people to learn about your culture, learn about their culture. And sometimes there's some very valuable jewels in that culture that's going to help you in your life. Yeah, and keep in mind, uh, these conversations happen, you know, on family vacations and places in like expensive Anguilla. resorts. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just where saying... Where people are qualified, right? Where, where people are qualified they and ain't nobody sitting somebody. Boom. They're not going to have this conversation with you at Subway, right? They're nope. going to have this conversation at a place where it's five grand to rent a bungalow. Yes. So now you're in there and they're like, okay, this guy must be somebody, Right. And they're like they're they're actually looking at you like okay he's a minority so who is more, this guy this guy's famous this more like, guy's more like sixty to rent a house during the summer it's sixty k yeah during the summer for the, the whole summer's... the whole weekend or the whole the whole I month like twelve days summer's the low season though but don't worry man that's good money Alex bro. don't say Jesus like that even though he is good to me <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good money. But I'm just saying. That's good money, man. Those that's, that's really good money. You those, know, those, we charge about that to rent our beach house out every summer. Hey! Ah, hey. But that's you, what I'm talking you about. real estate, that's what Show, you do, baby. That's what the fuck <laughs> I'm talking about. That's all I'm talking about. The conversations yeah. in our culture have to change. The conversations uh, as uh, us as men have to change. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, and this, the, like, even when we talk about going back to the Nipsey thing, it's so many different dynamics in this that we can break down. You can break down economic empowerment you can break down independence you can break down you know uh commercial real estate investing you can also break down the pain and the trauma mm -hmm. that comes with men in this fucking society i seen the dude in the bronx 24 years old albert albert rodriguez you know want to guess what race he is albert rodriguez 24 from the bronx killed his girlfriend because his girlfriend spent the night out wow you know what I'm saying? Now can I guess what race he is? <laughs> Shut up. Fragile yeah, yeah. fucking ego. Right. Fragile male yeah. ego. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Hating rejection. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Hating the fact that he thinks he owns somebody when he doesn't. You don't own people. You just experience them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's that fucking fragile male ego. This, this whole society has taught us about male supremacy. And when anything threatens that male supremacy, oh my motherfucking God, it's gonna be hell to pay. Yeah. You know, and 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 his 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 male supremacy was threatened because of the fact he thought he owned this young girl yeah. and she stayed out for the night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he decided to kill her. Fragile male ego. Those are the kind of conversations we need to be having. To we me, that's not male supremacy. If you really believe you were supreme, you'd be hundred percent okay with it. A hundred hundred percent okay with it. That's that shows insecurity. insecurity, but that's the fragile ego. Insecurity. You're motherfucking depressed. You got low self-esteem. Low self-worth. How do we lift up our brothers? You know what I'm saying? Black and white, brown, everybody. How do we lift each other up as I men love, so we can be enjoy. fucking secure? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I'd be like, yo, you got to, I hug you. I say, I love you. I yeah. value you. I, I appreciate you. Because if you ain't getting that shit from nowhere else, at least you're going to get that shit from here. You know I what I'm saying? We don't got to suck each other's dicks, but yo, I love you. We'll get there. <laughs> Give it some time. White boy's if, been doing that shit for a minute. If, they, hey, if things get really out of hand, all right, we're gonna really start showing y'all what the fuck it means to love each other, goddamn it. All right. All you motherfuckers guys out here that's shooting up schools cause y'all can't get no pussy, the buttholes are wide open. All right. Okay. The dicks are here for your sucking pleasure. Bro, it's All so right. true, man. You gotta. I asked my father. I asked what, my father. Your dick? No. What? No, no, no. <laughs> That's a terrible segue, bro. No, <laughs> I love, man. About love. I'm like, I asked him. I was like, Dad, why? Uh, you know, like how? How are how are you able to instill confidence in me? Like as a parent. Yeah, yeah. What'd you do? And uh, and he goes, he goes. I think you just show. I think you just show uh, interest in your child's life and you try to be as involved as you possibly can in their life. Mm. And through that involvement, which is showing, not telling, right, that your child starts to believe that his life is valuable. Mm. Like if you're at all those practices and all those games and you're talking to him about his day and all that kind of stuff, like – the reason I feel confident talking is because my parents listen to me. It's plain as that. Every mm. night we'd have dinner together as a family and they would listen to me about my day. And I developed this sense of when I speak, it's important. And then what happened later in my career is I, I was always fine when people listened to me. But when people didn't listen, 
I would break down, not break down, but I just lost all my confidence. I was like, why the fuck is that? And it was like, oh, cause I was too floated. I was too, I had too much support. Mm-hmm. And then later in my career, I had to learn how to have that self-esteem regardless if someone was interested in what I was going to say. But I think that the kernel, like the seed of confidence was set by my parents. Your parents loving you. Loving me and like showing it through being there. Like, I think you can be tough on your kid if you're there. You yeah, know those parents yeah, yeah, who are yeah, tough yeah. on their kid, but they're at every practice. Hey, you want to throw, the, shoot the ball around? You want to do this? Hey, uh, you know, let me see your homework. That sense of uh, I, I, your your life is valuable yeah. to me because I'm your parent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard though. I mean, I, I told y'all the story about how, you know, a couple of years ago, when my daughter first started running track. Yeah, and like just her doing the, the 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 long jump, and that was the first time she ever did it. It was just practice, and I was right. like, oh my god, that's terrible. And she just burst into tears. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that just taught me how to have a different approach when I'm trying to encourage her. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I'm not gonna sit here and just tell her something is terrible. I'm gonna tell her what she can do better, and that's and that's honestly taught me a lesson. Instead of just teaching your child to win, 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 just teach them to always do their best. Yep. Because if you are the best already, like if you're you know, athletically superior and you can learn whatever it is you're doing, you're going to be the greatest at it anyway. So just exactly. always do your best. Enjoy and the just, process, that's not it. the outcome. And me just instilling that in her yep. shot her confidence up the way she was dusting people on the track. And I and I also my mother, man, I think it was my when my daughter was first born, my first daughter, she's ten now. I remember my mother just saying, you know, I think I might have just asked her, you know, what I'm uh, what I'm supposed to do. She's like, just love her. And like that sounds like the most cliche thing ever, but yeah. no, no. Why do you think somebody like Albert in the Bronx, rest in peace, uh, not rest in peace, but he's in prison, rest in peace to the person he killed, the, yeah. his girl. He had a lack of empathy. Why? Because he probably never felt empathy as a kid. Yeah. Nobody ever showed him love. Nobody ever showed him real love. Nobody ever showed him what 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 empathy to your fellow man looks like. You have to instill that thing in your kids by showing them through what yeah. actions and deeds. Yeah, being well, there, like you said, but also don't baby them. Like maybe he was so babied and so coddled and so he don't know how to handle rejection. He he did not know how to handle yeah. rejection because he never got it. He yeah. was the the prize prince of his family, and his mother did everything possible for him. So when a woman didn't do what he said for the first time in his life, mm-hmm. he saw his mother do whatever his father said, and his mother did whatever he said. So the first time he experienced <coughs> a no from a woman, he just completely broke Lord down. Have mercy. I think that's why, look, I don't have kids yet and I I don't know how to raise them. All I can say is how I was raised and the things that worked for me and the things that didn't. But when my dad said that shit, it was profound. It was just like, just show interest in their lives. Like even being critical of your daughter in that moment with the long jump, she still knew that you were there. Yeah. And that's valuable. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that means something. I think that means something subconsciously to a kid. Yeah, I agree. And I think it sticks with them and it grows with them. And it it might be a pain in the ass. Like, come on, Dad, I don't want you to come to everything. But the fact that they know you want to be there. Yeah, exactly. Like me, I was having having that conversation last night because she had a talent show last night. Fifth grade talent show. My God. Lord have mercy. Not a lot of talent. (laughs) Bro. Not a lot of talent. You know what? I'm not even, I don't know who could be listening, you know, but I mean, come on. You got to know your kids suck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I... Them chairs ain't turning around. Bro, now nah, don't get me wrong. Them yeah. kids that's on them instruments, body and Slapping. shit. Yeah. Slapping. Piano. Asians, right? <laughs> Whoa, this one Asian tore the drums down. Oh, absolutely. Woo! Without a doubt. Without a doubt, bro. Unbelievable. Bro, this one Asian tore the drums Unbelievable. down. Unbelievable. But the drums. Any task that's repetitive, they'll be the best at. Drums, piano, instruments, mm-hmm. kids got it. Dance, pretty much. Kids, kids got that. Okay. Bro, it's nothing like seeing a bunch of little fifth grade white girls. Trying to sing Beyonce and Sade and Whitney Houston. I'm like, my God. They're killing it, huh? <laughs> Bruh. And I'm sitting there looking at my phone because if I look at my wife, she's looking at me waiting for me to just laugh or say something <laughs> dumb. I'm like, nope, not here. <laughs> They're kids. Yeah. Let kids be kids. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just a fifth grade talent show. Yeah. Whatever. You know? Yeah. Best thing about it, wasn't no awards given out. Right. It was just... A talent show, a talent right. showcase. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I'm saying all that to say she was saying things to me like, I did good, right? You thought I did good? You know what I'm saying? Like she wanted she wants your validation. that she validation, wants your approval, yeah. you know? So it's like me. And when, what I fucked up at last night is I didn't just say immediately, oh, you did good, baby. You know what I'm saying? I gave her flowers and stuff like that. But I, yeah. that should have been my first thing. 
So I didn't have to give now her. You learned it. Yeah, but I, I knew that already though. I just was distracted by other shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't give her that. But when you have kids, you're going to that's what they're going to constantly seek from you. Your validation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that if you instill that in them enough, they won't seek it from anybody else. Cause yeah. you can you can make your kid feel like they're enough. And and I mean, if you want to look at specifically women and, and daddy issues, like think about it. If you're not validating your daughter, a fuck boy will. Listen, I, they will. Can we pay some bills and talk about that for yeah. a second? No, let's pay, pay, do the mirror because I got to pee because I want to talk about that because I got an issue with daddy issues. Well, maybe, I want to talk about it. Maybe you got to be a better daddy. No, it ain't me. <laughs> I just don't understand all these girls who say they got daddy issues. We gonna talk about it. Because the guy they fucking. No, the fuck it's your never pops? the guy that you fuck. It's what it is, is they had a talent show and their dad didn't congratulate them immediately after. So then they got to find some dude that's going to congratulate them. That's what it is. Taylor's already signed because she's trying to fuck a man to look like her dad. No. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, say goodbye to expensive TV, TV bills with Philo. Okay. Philo TV. Philo TV is the cheapest way to watch over 50 of your favorite channels. You get to pick your top channels, by the way. Okay. ID, BT, OWN, VH1, AMC, VH1, 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 MTV, We, Nickelodeon, Discovery, VH1, Lifetime, TLC, and History. Catch the biggest shows on TV like The Walking Dead, Love and Hip Hop, SpongeBob, Paw Control, or Paw Patrol for the kids, uh, plus tons of classic shows and movies. You know what? You can even watch The Breakfast Club on Revolt. <clears throat> Plug. <laughs> Enjoy live and on-demand TV plus unlimited recording. Save as many shows as you want and never miss a minute of the shows you love. Watch from your TV, phone, or computer whenever you want. Philo costs only $20 a month. I'm going to say that again. Did you just hear what I just said? That's TV for $20 a month. So you'll save hundreds each month on your TV bill. Philo is available on Roku, iOS, Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV. There's never been a better deal on cord-free, commitment-free, hassle-free TV. To start your free trial, visit Philo TV slash idiots. That's P-H-I-L-O dot TV slash idiots. And you will get your TV going. Are we all done with TV? Taylor, come on the mic so I have something to talk to while Charlamagne drains the I think we are done lizard. with TV. Are you talking about like cable TV? I think we're done. I, I don't know anybody that's my age that is, here, here he comes back, that's signing up for TV again. No. Do you have TV, traditional have, cable? No. I have, cable, I have uh, like all the apps, like Apple TV, Roku. That's all, all that. you need. Yeah, that's Literally, it. what do you watch sports on or do you not care about I sports? I do ESPN. They have apps. And it's live TV too. That's the thing. With the apps, they have live TV. TV's done. Cable is done. Yeah. It is insane to fathom that in our lifetime, the institution of cable is over. Anyway, follow TV. Go get that shit. Now, let's talk about daddy issues. You got issues. kids. You got to. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's talk about daddy issues. What the daddy issue is this. This is what it comes down to. A father figure that is not active in his daughter's life or a horrible relationship between mm -hmm. a daughter and father uh, creates a void in validation. Okay. And that void in validation is often filled by another male figure. Okay. Right? Uh, and that male figure often is, uh, you know, someone that that girl is trading sex for that validation Yikes. in a weird way or trading, you know, like a lot of strippers have that kind of uh, daddy issue where they seek this validation from men, strange men. Um, now here's where it gets really evil. The women are often drawn to seek validation from men that in a similar way to their fathers don't give it out. So they're drawn to shitty dudes. They're drawn to dudes who are, withdrawing love and affection and they're constantly trying to seek and find and it's a really sad situation yeah i understand the idea of daddy issues what i don't understand is why would you feel that way about somebody you're fucking like i understand you trying to fill a void but there's a void that a boyfriend fills that daddy is not supposed to fill you understand what I'm saying? Like, you're not sexually attracted to your father. You're not sleeping yeah. with your father. You're not kissing your father. You're not looking for that type of love and affection from your father. Right. It's a different type of love and affection you get from a boyfriend. So I never understood why people say they got daddy issues. They're trading the sex for the affection. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what it is, right? And, you know, sometimes they act out sexually because it's like, you know how Blade... 
really wants blood, but he doesn't want to, you know, bite people and suck their blood, play the vampire. Yeah. So what he does is he has that serum. Yeah. It's like those girls really want the affection of their father, but they'll take the serum of some fuck boy that's willing to... That is so crazy to me. And the reason that is so crazy to me is because it's two different types of love. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the love that a father has for his daughter is totally different than the love a man will have from you. I've had girls say that, oh, I got daddy issues. What does that even mean? It means they're good ahead. <laughs> Man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you Yo, got daddy they're issues, They're the best ahead, bro. Oh. oh. He's in your life? Okay, come here. Let me ask you a question. He's... Taylor says you have an excellent father. What? First of all, mm-hmm. yeah. before y'all say anything, okay. don't say shit about my dad. I'm not. I, I speak highly. Like, this has nothing to do with your dad. Of, okay. Go ahead. This is just about your ahead, relationship. What, you Yo. what? My yeah. dad is yeah. excellent. Like, I love... Like, he's he's the reason, I think, why... Like, he you're set single? the pedestal. <laughs> Stop. That's but why I mean, you're single, that's why for I real. Take, but I, I don't take shit from a lot from of guys, guys because of him. And I'm a daddy's girl, for real, for real. So, okay, see, so that could be the opposite, right? She's got a man in her life. She's had her daddy. She's had that love and affection from a man. Yeah. So she feel like she don't need no guy. Yeah. You, I mean, it's you're going to be lonely. But I want to say it's not necessarily... A, when you guys say need someone, like, I don't feel like... Here she go with this bullshit. Why? Because why I just love that? when girls say they don't need a man. No, because... No, yes, asking, you do. No, no, just no, the way no, the men no, need a woman. That's not where I was going. I was okay. saying, what do you mean by, like, needing someone? Because She's not going to settle. Dick! <laughs> <laughs> Dick Taylor. First off, what? I'm not even, I'm exactly. Not even, I'm not even gonna go to that point. I'm just saying. Why are you eating kale right now? What do you mean? Because you're going to Barbados in a couple weeks. Why? Not in a couple weeks. It's I didn't know like you're, a, some months. I didn't know you're going back to the islands. Yeah. Guess you what? Like that island, guess what? Dick. With yeah. a man that she don't I need. I never got Ooh. dick in the islands. Yeah. Don't do that. With a man that she don't need. No. First of all, the guy that I'm going with, I know him for a long time, like almost ten years now. Y'all fucking. Anyways, so... How, <laughs> how old are you? 27. How old is he? 27. Oh, okay, same age. Okay, um, trying to catch a pedophile. I was, catch a pedophile. I, was, I, was see, I was trying to see... I was trying to see if he was grooming you. <laughs> Red shirt. Okay. Um, I forgot where I was going with this. Okay. I forgot what All you were right. saying. That means it's forgivable. No, 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 but I did want to say something about the daddy issues, though. Yeah. Because I've been in bad relationships, though, but I've had a dad, though. I don't think necessarily... Well, you were, I guess, going on with daddy issues. It doesn't make it, uh, it doesn't make it, uh, it's not a perfect solution, right? Yeah. But I think we're all capable of being in shitty relationships. It's just people who are seeking that love and validation tend to gravitate towards those mm-hmm. maybe worse relationships. Yeah. That's wild I've to seen, me. I've seen that before, though. Like, my, well, my close friend, she had, quote unquote, daddy issues. Like, the dad was in and out. He had... Like alcohol, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. all that stuff. So. Maybe because that's the way they see a man treat a woman. Like I can work yeah. too. Like if you think that's the way a man treats a woman, then you'll accept it because that's mm-hmm. what you know. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's why I think a lot of that can come into play. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, too. I think the culture you grow up in affects how you view relationships. Yeah, like I was mom faithful my whole them. life because I, I, my dad and mom were like faithful to each other, and then I went to Spain and everybody cheated in Spain, and I was like, I gotta try this. And that's a fact. <laughs> that's no, that's a fact. Dead ass. I did fact. not cheat until I went to Spain, and I realized. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say too. That's that's what I was gonna say. I feel like it's just part of the culture. environment too, though. Your environment, your environment makes everything. Yeah. It's like I was gonna, I was gonna eat pan con tomate. I was gonna speak Spanish. I was gonna, you know, go to the dance to EDM or whatever in the nightclubs, and I was gonna cheat. Yeah, but you know what? Because of my parents or whatever, how I raised, I'm still fearful of even like disappointing them at this age. Like I'm they know you fucking, but I know. But I'm like, I'm still at a, I'm at an age where I can, if I was to get pregnant, it's okay. I'm not like too young, to right. or Whatever, but I'm still fearful. Like no, like I have to be like married. Like I don't want to disappoint right. them in that way because they was your mom disappointed when she saw the picture with your tampon string hanging out? In <laughs> can Aruba? you stop saying that? Because there's no <laughs> tampon. Not, I didn't even have a period. Like stop saying that's why that. I thought it was weird. But sometimes. Sometimes girls oh do that gosh. so they don't have sex. What about the abortion? <laughs> what? You never told them about the I abortion? never had an abortion ever. I never got pregnant before and none of that. You never got pregnant? No. I'm very responsible. <laughs> Fuck you. <Pookie> trash. <clears throat> so, both, so there's no such thing as birth control and none of that shit, right? Oh, you huh? take birth control? Yes. Every day? No, I, I stopped because I'm not having sex. Every day? <laughs> <laughs> Like it's a fucking Tic Tac or something. You take birth control every day. There's different day. forms of birth control, like by the water. way. Like it's water. You got to drink some water every day. Sim, do you have daddy issues? No, she has a dad too. You got a dad too? Absolutely. 
No, but uh, wow, no, no, Black no. Fathers no, is really changing the narrative. Because she likes, no, no, <laughs> but Sim likes hood. Sim likes hood guys. Really? Yes. Come on, come bring oh. bring your ass over here. You like hood guys, Sim? I do. <laughs> I have a great dad, though. Was he a hood dude? Can you speak no, into the mic? My, my dad was straight A all the time. So why did you grow a love for hood dudes? Hold the microphone. Because they're great. They're attractive. Really? Yeah. What's I mean, attractive about them? Everything. Like their aura, the way they move, just everything that they do in life. So you like the, you find them sexy. You find hood dudes sexy. Yeah, but I don't like stupid hood. Like, I, there's a difference between somebody from the hood and a hood nigga. Like, oh. I like somebody who knows the hood and, like, has that mentality. So somebody but, from the street. Basically. Yeah, I like street niggas, yeah. But okay. I don't. Not guys that remain street niggas. Right, you got to grow evolved. out of it. Right, you got to grow out of it. All right, well, say, it. you got to say that. You want a reformed yeah. street guy. Absolutely. A Nipsey. A Nipsey, if you will. He is, every well, not every woman's dream, because Taylor don't really rock with it, but. Right. Yeah. One. Uh, one thing about Sim, she been a Nipsey fan forever. Yeah. This ain't no who. Th- that's her name, Sim. Oh, Sim. Yeah. Hi. This cool. not this Hi. not a new hey, phenomenon. Did you what'd you call her? Sim. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I missed so that. Wanna, I missed want, that. So you want oh, a guy Samantha. that grew up in that environment, but then evolved to other things? Yeah. Have you like, dated a like a square guy? No. Never even never. tried it. They're not my thing. And I keep saying because these hood niggas keep doing me wrong. I was like, you know, I really should try some like weak guy that wears weird sneakers. Yeah. That, like, yeah. A hipster. I think she's describing me. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> wears a shirt with red sleeves and <laughs> puts pomade in his hair. One of those weirdos. <laughs> no, honestly, shoes yeah. are a big deal for me. And shoes are a big shoes, deal. Shoes, I feel like, tell a party a character. What, so, what part? I don't know. It's like... I've never heard this one. Explain. This is good. Yeah. Like, if you... I think we're figuring out why it's so hard for you to find a good mate. <laughs> Yeah, hood like, dude with good but sneakers. Shoes, like, but you know what? Shoes, you can right. kind of change. But he's killed people, but he's cut those he's 11s. Got this, those, new, <laughs> those new Pumas are so phenomenal on this murderer. <laughs> he's able to run from the scene though. of the crime so fast. And those new RS-19 Pumas. My God. <laughs> Great shoes, though. Great shoes. Oh, um, boy. Yeah, because like if they're... And I don't know. I, that It might be somewhat of a cultural thing because my dad always said that. Like My, my family, they're immigrants too where are you from um, Guyana okay and they're very class structured over there and in Guyana like they always said like you would you should never have bad shoes like the bad shoes tell like you don't have anything so even if you didn't have dinner you had good shoes See, on. that's background though your culture instilled that in you yep. and you know my what I'm saying? brother is a sneakerhead so it was like me if I like a guy if I think a guy is attractive surfacely yeah the first thing I do is check his shoes to make sure this is gonna stick because if he has on the wrong kicks, it's like... You know how many guys thought you were standing at their crotch when you look down like that? All the way down? They don't know. They just think, they just see you looking down and like, oh, shit, she's standing at my crotch. <laughs> Yo, I love calling <laughs> girls out when they look at my dick. That's, the, the most, that's my favorite things to do. Like when girls do this shit, I'm like, Yo, you but just look you at my meat? When do they look at your dick? Dude, but if you all don't have girls dick always do on, that. What? If you don't have dick print pants on, then... Yo, we'll be sitting down, right? We'll be sitting down, like, eating a meal or something like that. And, like, we'll just be kind of like, talking to a laugh. And then they'll kind of look down. I'm like, did you just look at my fucking meat? <laughs> Dude, you girls love looking at meat. You look... Jesus Christ. What is it about looking at meat? I've never had a girl look at my meat. <laughs> you never looked at meat. No. Even me never. saying it right now. Oh, okay, no, no. I don't have no, that kind of print. <laughs> I don't, I'm being honest. I was, I'm too fuck. I be wearing great sweatpants. That, that shit don't happen for me. Way too much that shit don't happen for me. <laughs> I be trying. You can't have little dick Listen, and sweatpants. I be looking bro. at my own pictures like, whoa, no point. <laughs> <laughs> this picture is vegan than a motherfucker. Vegan as a motherfucker. No meat in this motherfucker at all. all right. This shit is plant based. All cotton, baby. All right. All cotton sweats. No meat. <laughs> okay, so these these hood dudes, right? Mm-hmm. But why don't you try dating? You have you ever dated a, a white guy? No, and I will not. I'm sorry. Well, you don't have to apologize. <laughs> well, I'm just I don't want to. You know, I don't. I want to be truthful, but I don't want to offend you. Why would that? You seem like me? a nice guy. I just you can't control who you're attracted to. Right. Right. Like I don't control what food I like. I would like to eat Thai food, but it's too hot. It's not that I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> but dating is not the same as food. Of course it is. You don't decide who you're attracted to. I mean, if you're okay. attracted to white guys and you like them more than any other group, but you're like, I'm not going to fuck them, 
<laughs> then you're stupid. But if you just find yourself not attracted to white guys, then why yeah, should I don't think there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with preference. I hate when people try to make preference prejudice. Yes, yeah, I stupid. hate that. Yeah, I honestly can't find like, especially I used to work with a lot of white people, and the yeah. girls like they would try to include me, and be like, "Oh my god, isn't he so hot?" Yeah, and yeah. like I honestly can't gauge it for you. Like yeah. I can see why maybe you would think he's attractive, right? But nothing happens when I look at him. Really? What about Chris Helmsworth? Who's that? Thor. Thor. No. What about Chris Evans? Captain America. Captain no. America. First of all, you got to choose people outside of... I don't watch those things. Um, What about... Uh, who's another white guy everybody think is fine? Premium Pete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So wait. You're telling me right now, when you look at that sexy Jewish man... <laughs> that, that Chris Morrow, baby. Ashkenazi God Ooh. right there. Look at it. Wait, look at the sneakers. Them Sam Smiths. Look at head to toe Chris Morrow. Okay? This is 99% body. Okay? Dick print popping. Nothing turning you on, Sam? Look at that. That's straight cheesesteak in his pants. <laughs> Philly cheesesteak, baby. Philly cheesesteak, Philly baby. Cheese steak, baby. Look at that nice shape you know up. Look at that nice Caesar. Caesar's tight. <laughs> Beer coming in right. Look at this raw sex appeal. That don't do it for you? Jim? Apple Not laptop so you know he's breaded. Y'all can bump glasses. <laughs> <laughs> No, I take my glasses off. Hey, yeah. seriously, no, all jokes are. When two people with glasses kiss, do they both take their glasses off? Well, see. No, seriously. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> you would got to, though, right? You got, you got that little fold. I've never actually kissed somebody else that wears glasses. Really? But in order, like, if if I'm going to have a good time, yeah. I have to take you my have glasses to. off first. What about Asians? Do you find Asians attractive? Let's just stop this conversation from the beginning. Ooh, just black guys. Oh, there you go, Sam. So just black guys. Only black men. This is where black women fuck up. No, thanks. This I will shut black... your black ass I'll up. Take, yeah. I'll take that I'm back to talking about yup. This is why black women fuck up. Is, listen, in any negotiation, you have to have other offers on the table. Right? So why would black why would black dudes treat y'all right if they know you are gonna only come back to black dudes? No, cause if black women start going, yo, I'm fucking Asian dudes, I'm fucking white guys, I'm fucking Indians, all let, of a sudden let, black dudes gonna be like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. Choose from. Let the record show Sim is rare. Say what? Let the record show Sim is rare. What There's a lot of black women out here that's like they they willing to take whatever loves them. Asians. No, I don't mean it like that in a bad way. I'm saying they're willing to date. <laughs> that didn't sound good. <laughs> I didn't mean it sound to, like some daddy issues. Yeah, right I didn't mean to say it like that. I'm just saying they're willing to love who loves them. Right. right you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like they'll they'll date a white guy. They'll date an Asian guy. They'll date a whatever right. Alex is. I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying there's a reason white girls are working on their ass. Right? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah, because yeah. they seen white dudes, like myself, gravitating towards other races. And they're yeah, like, okay, yeah, we got to yeah. step it up. When the last time you dated a white girl, show? That's a good question. Shit, I haven't dated a white girl in a minute, man. <laughs> Say what? You been dating black girls? What? You just you, listen you to the podcast you know. now? I didn't. You never talk about your date life. No, I'm out here. Show's had a, <laughs> I date everyone. Show's had a baby that was black, black. Oh, well, not black, black. Yeah. Canadian, black. I think I've had more black girlfriends than white. <laughs> But yeah, but that's just what happens. That's because you got a little bit more. Uh, I don't like using the word swag because that's just a way for a man to call another man sexy without sounding gay. <laughs> but you got a little bit more of that than, uh, <laughs> than <laughs> average white guy. <laughs> Do you like that intro? That's so that's so good, yo, dude. This is good. This goes to you saying like we will not compliment each other, bro. Like we gotta def we gotta make up whole other words. I'm just trying to think. Why well, do like the word like, yo, swag? You look good, bro. But, but like, isn't that it's so not, true? It's not looks, though. You got a little bit more. We'll do this. We'll cool do this. than we'll do this. most we'll white go. guys. We'll be like, we'll look at our friends and be like, "Yo, yo, you killing it, bro?" <laughs> like, oh no, you make a sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Okay, oh, shit. okay. Oh, shit. I see you. You do like girls do? <laughs> Say what? That's what girls do too. We do that. Y'all copy us. Everything y'all do, you get from us. I was gonna say it's interesting though. Did y'all ever? Did you get? Do you ever get mad if a black girl's dating a white guy? Sometimes. Why? Um, probably because I was taught that. Like, I remember one of my earliest memories of interracial relationships was when my cousin married a white guy and everybody was mad. So I just thought I had they to be mad, mad too. too. Huh? They were mad? What you mean? That's like, my family. But And here's the crazy thing. She's, her marriage has outlasted 
Everybody. Wow. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> my, her, her, her marriage has outlasted yeah. my mom. Shows, do you ever get married? Two of my aunts. Two of my girl dating a black guy. No. No, well, not a black guy, but just outside their race or anything. No. Like that. I mean, I don't care about any, any of that stuff. But, that's I, never, but I also grew up in Manhattan. I grew up seeing yeah. this every single day. Yeah. It was not odd for me. Like, I grew up in a wildly diverse, like, my high school was half Asian. Think about that. Really? Fifty percent eight. Like all mm. of us were the minorities in our high school. Mm. So it was. A, it was. I had a very different upbringing than most people. So I understand how it might be shocking for maybe you guys seeing that. But for no, me, it was really. like I, no. I was in the sub. Well, well. Get, what gets me more mad is when a black guy only dates white girls and they shit on Alex. white girls. Yeah, but that's a total. See, it's exactly. Alex. See, you that's only the thing. Date white girls. <laughs> My ex girl was Puerto Rican, and the one before that was. But listen oh, to what you said, so I, though. <laughs> it's not. It's, I dated it's, way more black girls than Alex. So. <laughs> but, but listen to what I dated way more. Listen, black listen to what Taylor girls. said. You're not mad that they're dating the white girls. You're mad because they're shitting on the black girls yeah. in the yeah. process. Yeah. That's the problem. That's the problem. Like even with me, I don't have a, like when people get mad when I say I love to see black couples together. That's not me shitting on black and white relationships. No. I'm just saying when you come from a, a society or a culture where you see a lot of broken homes sure. and it's a lot of dysfunction, like a lot of fathers aren't in the household. Yeah. I love to see a black man with a black woman having black kids. Yeah. I think that that's a dope family structure. You know what I'm saying? It makes me feel good to hear Taylor say she grew up with her father. It makes me feel good to hear Sam say she grew up with her father. That's the type of father I am. So it's like I'm not shitting on interracial relationships. I just like to see the black family. And that's based off the way the black family has been uh, unjustly portrayed or maybe justly portrayed in society. I don't know. But I know a lot of it's black aspirational girls, though, for you. Mm-hmm. that yeah. like they'll get mad just because a black guy is with a white girl. But then if a black girl is with a white guy, they're like, oh, yes, girl, you better get like they be hype. If a black you said you've said if a black girl is with a white guy. Yes. They get really excited. Yeah, but then if it's they the know, yo, they know. All right. Yo, <laughs> it, hey, 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 because we bring the hammer. Oh. Nope. <laughs> Prove it. Hey, Prove it. Hey, we bring the hammer. You know what I'm saying? The Are there some nails? Hey, there's some nails around here? Cause, cause, cause now, by the way, you're a white guy. You yeah. could be describing your murder weapons. <laughs> <laughs> All right? <laughs> okay. All right? It could be your murder weapons. All right? Yeah. It is an interesting thing because mm-hmm. if if you if you see, like, a white couple together with white kids and you're like, ah, oh, it just makes me so happy to see that. It's a little weird, right? That's because y'all are in power. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Why is that weird? I Wait, think people would couple? find it. I think people would find it weird. I don't think I don't care if they're dating each other. I don't give a fuck. No, no, not dating but each other. To say, the, to say out loud that you 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 oh, are proud of, of that. Oh, but we 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 hear that in other heritages though, right? I'm Italians saying, say that. Armenians say that. Asians yeah. definitely say that. So I think that's Dominicans. Where, yeah. So I think that's where it comes down to. And I think that's when like we often talk about whiteness as like a monolith, but if we just break whiteness up into culture. And and we go, oh, I just love to see a Jewish family or I love to see an Italian family. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, to yeah, see yeah. a whatever family, yeah. a Greek. Like Greeks are the most only marry within each other. Yeah. You know, so Asians, I feel like. Asians, so, yeah. definitely. Well, besides but, it, but it's also not <laughs> Asian. Besides Chris. <laughs> but, it, but it's also not just all Asians, right? It's like, actually, I don't know the pressure, uh, Chris, but like, do Chinese want to just marry Chinese? Chris, you want to speak for your people? No. <laughs> I, correct me if I'm wrong, but Chris, I, I would imagine that like if you're Chinese, there are certain regions that only want to marry within the region, even less so. Less so. Yeah. All right, fair enough. That's fine. <laughs> it is. It is just a, an interesting thing, but I think that you guys should um, try the the white delicacies I've had a white that exist. Before, though. You had a white. Well, not how'd it go? Not he only ate me out though. He did. We're the best at that. Well, Puerto Ricans yeah, are better. Y'all, y'all was Puerto good. Ricans are I better. Had, they're the best. We're second. Are okay. They're the, they're better because they have smaller dicks than us. Puerto Ricans got small dicks. <laughs> Puerto Ricans got smaller dicks than white guys. Dude, small dicks and smallest feet you've ever seen. You've never seen a Puerto really? Rican with a. You, Puerto Ricans have only. Alice, you just, you're not gonna rep for your hood. <laughs> you're not gonna rep for yourself. You're not full Puerto Rican though. Keep it 100. You're not full Puerto Rican. Full Puerto Ricans don't go bigger than nine and a half. I've never no, seen a Puerto right. Rican with bigger than nine and a half size not shoe. That big. But really? I, only had, I only had two. Though, but they're so. the best eating pussy on the planet. Nobody's no. better. No. Nobody's what, pussy tastes like I've, roast compoyo? You know who's the best? Who's the best? Trini. Trini, uh, Trini guys. That's Puerto Rican. Same shit. Nice. It's fucking down the block. What are you talking about? Everybody in that area is Puerto Rican. You a head monster, yo. You just be out here fucking letting guys give you head. 
Just how you gave had girls gave you like don't do that. Wait, what? You know? Sound like what? Sasha. She's a Taurus like me. Wait a minute. But... See? <laughs> Sasha. You, a guy will Sasha. Go down Sasha on you with a head monster. Anything? Uh, you know what I do? What's I that? I set my alarm. What? <laughs> look, 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 look. So I'll set it, right? If I know something's about to go down, I'll set I Actually, wait. I haven't done it in a long time, guys. This is my college days. So I'll set an alarm. Make it seem like, like, give it a good time of when I think he's going to be done. Mm-hmm. And then it'll ring, you know, I like someone's calling me. I'm like, oh, hello, for real? And then I'm like, yo, I gotta go. Yo, women what are mean, scumbags. Wait, wait, yeah. Exactly, that's horrible. <laughs> yo, you mean really scumbags? That's horrible. Yo, I know, yo, you mean when, he, scumbags, when yo. he's done or when, yo. you, when you're done? Because you gotta come, right? Um, Sometimes I don't. Yo, question. What what happens if he. How is it good head if you don't come? It's not, then. These girls don't be oh. coming. Yeah, but it's all good. Okay, so here's the thing. What Has a guy ever tried to walk the dick up, though? Walk the dick up? Yeah. Let me put the tip in. No, no, no. <laughs> like, he goes down on you, and then he mm-hmm. fingers you a little bit, and then he just walks the dick up towards your mouth. No. So you're like, Walk no? Walk the dick up towards my mouth? Is that just a white guy thing? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, dude, we perfected <laughs> wait, this move. Wait, wait, this wait, is wait. the move, yo. <laughs> what do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? Yeah, I heard uh, that was one of Harvey Weinstein's staples. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 what do you I don't mean? know. If you, right? I don't know if you okay. want to. You're laying down. You're getting. You're getting eaten out. Okay. Right. Then the guy goes and just fingers you, and he's on the side. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then he just <clears throat> puts the dick near your face, and you're like, "Well, I might as well just suck it if it's already by my face." No, it's kind of already like. That's walking the dick up. Walking the dick up. <laughs> yeah, that I walk the dick up. Jesus Christ, that's just no. not like they're gonna walk you right up to a precinct <laughs> and, and take your fingerprints and your mugshot after that shit. No, <laughs> this is all enjoyable experience no, for the woman. A lot of times, I feel like I'm the only one that like initiates the dick suck. Yeah, really. Not, no, not the. Are you talking Taylor, about just sucking dick? You're three I'm feet tall. Sex, like, you're <laughs> always initiating the dick suck. You're right there by people's hips at all times. <laughs> <laughs> you're three feet tall. <laughs> what are you talking about? No doubt. Um, no but, doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like, I'm talking about, you talking about this sucking dick. Like, I'll, Oh my God. I'll, what? 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 I the hit is from you. <laughs> You're my niece. You're she not, she's disgusting. not my niece. Keep going. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Keep going. Talk about what that dick sucking girl. About? Talk about that shit. Put your earmuffs on, Charlotte. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, back to you sucking dick. <laughs> so guys walk the dick up, right? No, they never walk the dick up on me. A guy not never walk the dick not up? Not that I can remember, no. Never, out of nowhere. Like how you're describing it? No. Like I'll I'll just do it. You oh, you just you just walk the head down. Yeah. Gotcha. I'll just walk downstairs. Yeah. You just walk downstairs. <laughs> yes. Yo, that's what's up. All right, that's good. <laughs> Anyway, Sam, I think that you should Sim. continue. What, but your name is Samantha. They like to call Sim. But Sam. Her daddy is black. Her uh, mother is black. <laughs> okay. Go with it. I am white. <laughs> right. Okay. I am Caucasian. All right, so, so, so the I'm Sam that you're used to. I'm not going to jump from Sam to Sim. Okay, the Sam okay. that you're used to. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wait, don't jump to like oh, Robert the Dick or Sim, whatever. Sim, Sima, who's got That's the keys? That's the keys to okay. my Mima. Gotcha. You okay. Got to put a little spice on it. You there know what I'm saying? There we go. Anyway, this, that's not from Guyana. No. <laughs> no, but we kind of just, we steal other people's music because we don't really make our own. Oh, you don't? Very good reggae. Okay. No. British sent, Guyana? You just sent Guyana into a frenzy. <laughs> Guyana, we've not, we didn't even know we had listeners in Guyana, but they're going to be all in the sound. Bro, they're going to be so upset. I said media. one thing no, about I, Belize, and everybody in Belize was fucking DMing me about how dare you talk about our country like this? How dare you say we don't got Wi Fi? I'm on Wi Fi right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm like, nobody give a fuck, bro. Like, Let the record show I'm very proud to be Guyanese, and we have a lot of other awesome things to offer. Music is not quite one of them. Okay, so here's one thing. Okay, you, this is British Guyana. Aren't there a bunch of different Guyanas? It's just Guyana. And there's another one too, right? This is the South American one, right? Yeah. So there's British, isn't there like French? Not anymore, I don't believe. I Y'all think got that rid of that old. one? I think we're just Guyana now. All of it is the one. When the last time you've been to Guyana, Sam? <sighs> like 15 years ago. Okay. Damn. We don't know, we don't know if she's the best uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? See? ambassador this, for Guyana. All this pride, right. they don't ever want to go home, yo. I don't know American history, so don't ask me about Guyanese history. So you don't history. know Guyanese history? You don't know American on, history? I'm great on food. <clears throat> uh-huh. I'm great on culture, uh-huh. not history. Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle. That's but hood shit. 
I, I'm used to some of the finer things, too. Oh, really? <laughs> I find that Peter Luger every now and then. I okay. that joke. Okay. <laughs> Look who's out here with the whites. Look who's <laughs> dabbling. Wow. Some Why potato the fuck you all gratin. Bay, Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Let that salt hit your elbow, girl. Let salt Bay got a different steakhouse. You know, I thought you were talking about Peter Luger. You hit him with the salt We're going to see how much time you've been with the whites. How, how do you have your steak, steak cooked? Medium. She been with the whites. <laughs> she been with the whites. Sim has been trying that out. Let medium? people do this well done shit. I thought you like a rare. I do medium well. Say what? I, I know, I know. I like but medium well. Y'all got to come down with it. it you got to come me a down. It's to get to medium. And it tell them me. about it because they're not going to trust me. They're going to think I'm crazy. But let me tell you something. Talk to me. How I got there. How'd you get there? Because my mom, first of all, mm-hmm. from the majority of my life, I thought steak was hamburger meat, like Salisbury steak. Oh, wow. My mom would be like, oh, I made steak tonight. And it would just be burgers. <laughs> but um, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> burger meat and rice. You adorable poor people. I didn't know what real steak was till I was like 18. I was eating it at Friday's. <laughs> okay, go on, go on. I'm new to Peter Luger. Okay. But um, my friend was a chef, and when he went to chef school, they, um, like, got to invite their friends and family to come, like, taste a meal. Uh-huh. And they served steak. Okay. And the steak was red as shit. Like, real red. Like, yeah, yeah. it was rare. rare. It shit. was just rare, yeah. brown That's too much for me. That's too much for me, yeah. It was just brown around the edges. But I was like, damn, we can't embarrass him. Like, we got to eat this shit. So we just took the L, said a prayer, sent it up to God, and we Lord ate it. mercy. But it wasn't bad. Slap. It was good. Slap. I was but like, you said rare oh, though. Slap. This nah, but nice. when you go medium, you right there's a different flavor, a different mm-hmm. texture to it. Try it. Yo, I'm telling you before. I don't dislike it. Son, we, we we'll go, but I like medium. Well, I like medium, again. medium well. We now go to I'll these fancy. Well, sometimes we we'll go to like a fancy restaurant. Like I'm talking about fancy. This guy likes to eat at fine yes, dining. Okay. <laughs> and I'm Charlemagne and like. Wax will order steaks and I love w- watching the moment where they order it well done and then the waiter just kind of like pauses for a second <laughs> and then he's like okay I guess I'll, I'll, oh, guess I I'll never do, do well done medium well I used to do well done guys do medium well. it's medium you have to go to medium you I have to it. go to medium just give the try medium go go medium it's, all that re- it's more red you right? go medium rare like see Alex is used to the finer <laughs> things too Alex is a very cultured individual right here I, I don't vampire, like the medium that's Alex. too much for me I, I can't go medium rare. I like a nice medium. Well, let, let's pay, let's 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 do this mid roll, and then come back and run Smart, through some pop culture compensate. topics. Okay, let's go. Uh, Squarespace. No, I did that. Squarespace. You did that. Yeah, but now that you just where got, um, yo, you know what? This is where we're at. We're at Zebit. Okay. You know, Zebit believes that everyone deserves access to lifelong interest-free credit. Okay, with Zebit. You have the power to buy what you need and pay over time interest-free. Zebit provides a better zero-interest credit option for all members, no matter your credit score. With Zebit, there's zero cost to join, zero membership fees, and zero late fees. Your Zebit account is not determined by your credit score, and your Zebit account does not impact your credit score. Did you just hear that? I, I did. tried it before, too. You have you, Zebit? really? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, shit, shit. Taylor. Talk Let's to go. Us. <laughs> Talk to <laughs> us, girl. Let's um, go. I used it for an iPad, and they don't charge the interest rate. They just it's a wholesale, so it's easier and it's better. Wow. wow. Well, salute to Zebit. They got uh, iPads and more than fifty thousand products in their marketplace, and brand names like Xbox, Sony, Apple, GoPro, and Fitbit, all at competitive prices. Uh, from electronics to barbecues, furniture, and more, Zebit has everything you need for when you need it. Okay, Zebit has a five star rating on Trustpilot, and they've earned the trust of hundreds of thousands of customers who shop on Zebit. You can sign up for Zebit today at zebit.com/idiot. Did you use your uh, code, Taylor? Oh uh, yes, I did. Wow! So you got twenty five hundred dollars credit mm-hmm. to shop yep. the Zebit Marketplace at zero interest and zero cost to join. That's z e b i t dot com slash idiot for twenty five hundred dollars of interest free credit. Zebit dot com slash idiot. Now let's run through some pop culture shit before we get out of here. Talk to me. Well, just things in general. Um, <laughs> New York declares public health emergency regarding measles outbreak in Brooklyn. Do we care? Um, listen, I don't even know if I want to give my opinion on this because I have a joke that, about it that I'm going to be doing in the new tour. I just think people should wear condoms. Is that how you get measles? No. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Prove it! <laughs> Fuck a guy with measles with no condom yeah. <laughs> and see if you don't get measles. Yeah. <laughs> All right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't even know what measles are. Like, how crazy is this? This is how amazing it Body is to herpes. be in America. Is it? Herpes, is it? that's all. Chicken pox. Yeah, it is. No, it is all over it's the It's chicken pox? Yeah. I, I, listen, I'm Eczema? Eczema? 
I don't. Growing up, I thought you could, I thought you could only get measles in sitcoms. What? Bro, I don't know I what measles are. I did like, not think measles was a real hold thing. Hold on one Can we just consider how fucking privileged we all are in America oh that none of us know what the fuck measles Maybe is? Maybe this is just the idiot's portion of the brilliant idiots. Oh. <laughs> okay? Maybe everybody else knows what measles is, oh. but we're just the two motherfuckers who don't know anybody who's had it. You know what I'm saying? Why don't we know anybody's had it? Because we don't even got that shit. I, I, Lucky I, sons of bitches. Hey, all I can tell you is wear condoms. Huh? Wear condoms. I'm out here wearing condoms. Magic bro. Johnson, was he wrong? To step down? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. No. Me neither. No, he made the absolute right decision. Like, Let me tell you how fucked up we are in America because we talk oh. about how fucked up we are in America. Yeah. A man tells you, yeah. I was having way more fun on the other side. Simple as that. I was way more happy as on that. the other side. Yep. Basically telling you this shit is too stressful. Yep. I don't want to lose relationships. He said, yo, me and Jenny Buss are friends. Yep. That's like my sister. Yep. This business shit ain't working out. And sometimes when you have these personal relationships with people and y'all try to do business, it doesn't work out. Yep. So you disregard the business so you can keep the personal because the personal means more to you. Way more. Why when a man says that, that's a strange thing to you? Because people are viewing it without a billion dollars in their bank account. Boom! And beat HIV. You don't beat HIV, stress the fuck out. Absolutely. That man has learned how to have a peace of mind a long motherfucking time ago. 100%. I, don't see, I didn't see the problem with it whatsoever. I'm not having fun. This it's shit a smart fun. decision. It was great. It's, he doesn't need the money. At all. So once his lifestyle took a dip down... Take, get the fuck out of there. You are successful. You are one of the greatest basketball players to ever live. Yep. You are uh, one of the greatest basketball players to ever become an entrepreneur. Yep. You are a self-made billionaire. Yep. And you got this, movie theaters named after you, bro. That's it. This thing right here causes you any stress whatsoever. You tap the fuck out. Life is short, especially for you, potentially. Magic? Right? Magic? No. Magic. Potentially. Done, I mean, listen. Magic has outlived all of us. Magic had HIV for, what, 20 plus years? Yeah, dude. Come on. Magic HIV is older than Lil Yachty. Think about that. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, sleep on Magic if you want to. Magic might... Listen, Magic might still be here after we're gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, listen, salute to Magic Johnson. Um, Magic invested in Starbucks when Starbucks was like not even a Bro. thing thing. Magic is... Magic is yes! But here's the thing that's interesting about uh, being like a president of a basketball team. Um what makes you good at business does not make you good at that. Mm -mm. This is not business. You can't throw money at a problem. That's what people do when you're in the regular business world, right? Your business is struggling, so they're like, let's inject some cash. And usually that works. You cannot inject cash in basketball as a salary cap. It, you need a nerd to do this job. You need a nerd that understands a collective bargaining agreement, and that's it. Yeah. Don't worry about anything else. That's how you get it done. And Magic was the face of a franchise. He was charming, but you can't charm your way into being a successful president of a team. You just yeah. need a nerd to do it. And also, it's only his second year. If you ask me, I think the Lakers have a lot of great things to build on. I just think they got rid of a lot of their young talent too soon because we live in this motherfucking era where people want results immediately. immediately. Hold on to D'Angelo Russell. I don't give a fuck how many people he's taping without their knowledge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hold on to motherfucking uh, Julius, Julian Randle. Julius right. Randle, whatever the fuck his Julius name Randall, is. Yeah. And you still got Ball and Kuzma and Ingram and develop that shit. Give right. it some time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't have time. Anyway, uh, Kim K studying to become a lawyer. How do we feel about that? I have, I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. I think it's the biggest piece of bullshit for people to even be upset about that. Her father was an attorney, Robert Kardashian, a great attorney. So she probably grew up influenced, you know, wanting to be a lawyer. But then her yeah. life took a different career path. Now yeah. she's at that point once again where you got all of this money what are you and do? you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. So if she wants to go motherfucking take the bar, let her go take the motherfucking bar. Guys, you get to a certain point in life when you have, when you don't have to worry about your finances. Mm -hmm. And this is what most people will never get to. But when you do not have to worry about your finances and your survival, you just have to distract yourself until you die. That's it. Right? Some people buy planes. Right? That's Some it. Some people swim with sharks. That's it. Some people want to become a lawyer. That's literally all you end up doing. And this is her choice. Go for it. If, if that's what you think is going to make you happy and, you know, that's how you get to avoid Kanye— do it. I mean, Bro. I think that's what this is about. I think she's just like, how do I not spend any time with this fucking crazy guy? Bro. Say what? Of course he is. When that, that's how you know shit is not popping for him if he's on Kardashians. Wow. Bro, this that's is, what happened? I guess. I heard, I heard a new album slapping, though, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll whatever. see. Listen, uh, this is also another example of reincarnation in real time. 
Ooh. because you start off a, home, a homemade porn, porn star, mm-hmm. right? Then you become a reality star. Right. Then you become an entrepreneur. Now you've become an a, a, a activist of sorts. Mm. And now you're going to become a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really can't put Kim in a box. You may want to, and we keep trying to... That's what. That's the other thing that bothers me. We keep trying to pinpoint, oh, the sex tape is what blew them up. Nah, no, it did. It's a lot of people with sex people, tape. A lot of people out here sucking dick on tape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter yeah. if she's one of the first. Like, what you saying? The first person over the hill gets the cum shots in their face? It doesn't even make... <laughs> no, it don't matter. No. Like, I, we want to justify like that because we don't believe in their fame, but the reality is, is she's got something. She's She's got, like... She's got something, man. She's got it. People want to watch her. Simple as that. You can't be upset. That's it. And now she's trying to reinvent herself again by going to be a lawyer. I don't so have a problem. She do prison with reform. It. Is that is that what that's about? And I represent have no these people. No idea. I mean, I, I just think, I honestly think it's just, yo, their father was a lawyer. Nobody else in their family did that. You know what I'm saying? But she seems invested in prison reform, right? She seems she invested definitely is. in yeah, like yeah, helping yeah. these people she who are wrongfully is. accused or getting them out of prison. It's like the best way to continue helping them is to understand the law. I respect that. I Fuck respect it. it. Do your thing. Um, I need to go back to that tape. I haven't seen that tape in a while. Trash. Was it really trash? I remember it being trash. I, I remember it not being it, not 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 being revisit worthy. But I, I I remember thinking that she gave good head. The best part was when she, he's about to come and she. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Oh my oh, God, Taylor. What do you mean she went to go get what? Where'd she go? Like when she, it, he's about to come and she, about to go Where I was it? Go get come. Yeah, I don't understand what the fuck you're talking about. I'm talking about I remember Ray J having an amazing sized penis, but what kind of cum did he have that wow. this yeah. this leaves? No, he had a beautiful. And somebody got to go dick. get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did she go get it? Yeah. I love how y'all open with that though. That what? really makes. Did he didn't have a beautiful dick? No. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it was beautiful, but it was you know big. Listen. I'll say it was beautiful. I don't give a fuck. I got a beautiful dick. Okay, go. I just remember that she, he was about to come and like she went to go have it down her throat. She went to swallow it. Yeah. Where was it? Coming out his dick. Oh, so it was like dripping. Like he was about to come and then she's like, I want to taste, or did she, I don't know. Oh, she was jerking him off. No, he jerked himself. He off. was fucking her, yeah, and then and he then pulled out, and she was yeah. like, "I want to take it down." I thought that was the best part because I didn't see that coming. All right, you Absolute didn't see that dark. coming. You don't. That's you. That's what girls do. No, not for her. I don't know. I just didn't. That's how you don't get pregnant. I respect the sure woman that. that knows what she wants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Kodak Black. Oh gosh. You know what was interesting about the Kodak Black thing is, Talk is to um, me. you know, after Nipsey uh, was murdered, everybody was like, "Listen, you know, we need to stop." The violence, we need to stop the hatred, we need to stop this kind of horrible treatment, and, you know, we need to put our guns down, and we need to just come together. And then Kodak Black said his dumb ass shit, and immediately everybody's like, yo, if he steps in the hood, it's over, yeah. I'm taking him out, I'm killing him. It's like, really? And, and, Did uh, you uh, not uh, understand what Nipsey was about yeah. here? Like Saying things like, uh, please God, take Kodak. And give us back Nipsey. No, we don't want to see any more black men taken away from their their families. You know what I'm saying? My my biggest issue with the Kodak Black thing, and I can see both sides. Right. Um, you know, Kodak, I feel like the OGs like T.I. and Game should have reached out to Kodak on the phone. Because I feel like when you They're jump, that, I feel like when you jump out at people on social media, it's really it's high school. Yard. It's really the schoolyard, bro. Exactly. And the game and TI did that on purpose because they want the pats on the back for school in Kodak. They did that shit for clout. Yeah. That shit was super clout chasing, corny shit. And it's like But I no, I'm no no, I'm not gonna say it was clout chasing. I'm gonna tell you why. I thought it was at first I was thinking that a little bit, but I'm gonna tell you why it wasn't. This is a very emotional time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This was Game's homeboy. This was T.I.'s homeboy. And if yeah. he was my man, but they was like really close to him. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, they felt like they was defending his honor. I spoke to Game. You know what I mean? I spoke to Game and, and I heard what T.I. said. And they both was like, yo, Nipsey's not here to defend himself. You know what I'm saying? So they felt like they were just, yo, you, you're not going to say that about so call him. that man's girl. I get it, but in a way, Kodak said it publicly. They don't want anybody else to do anything like that publicly. So they got to make an example out of Kodak. You know what I'm saying? No. Cuz if you cuz if you reach out behind the scenes and 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 squash it behind the scenes, nobody sees you coming to the defense of 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 of, of Nipsey and his people. So I can see both sides. I, but I I just feel like How about this? I do feel like I wish they would have called him. How about this? Mhm. How about they both call him as OGs? Yes. Right? And they do privately they say, "Hey man, you know, this guy meant a lot to all of us." 
And you know what? Maybe you were saying that in jest. Maybe you didn't mean disrespect to the man. Mm -hmm. But it, it was be, disrespectful. It was disrespectful. And it's going to be interpreted in that way. And you might not want to be remembered as that dude, especially during this time, mm -hmm. you know? Because you probably really respected Nipsey. You probably really fuck with Nipsey too. And I just wanted to hit you personally. And you do with that information what you want. Yeah. You might have seen Kodak go back on live and go, yo. My bad, man. I was wilding. That was disrespectful. And he did apologize, but he apologized and basically said, but all of y'all that's really coming at me, Suck fuck y'all, this yeah, and that, yeah. this and that. Yeah. So I, I, I get He said, it. or what, to T.I. on his but shit. But that's what happens when it's the school, y'all. That's what I'm saying. Like, And it's a little kid. He's really he's trolling the shit out of T.I. in game. He is. Like, he's, like, like, he's like, T.I., fix your lip. He like game boy, boy. I got you. Fifty Cent got you off that pole. Changed your life, like man. Come on, man. Why are we following up Kodak Black? But bro? that's the thing. It's like there's a different. You got to understand. He's a juvenile soul. Yeah. So yeah, there's yeah, a different yeah. way to operate with him. And if you play into the beef shit, he's gonna use that shit for his own benefit. But if you hit him personally and you say, "Hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. This is this maybe is not the way that you want to be remembered in this situation. You do with that information what you want. I bet he would apologize himself. I will say this. Um, Kodak better do some push ups. Because, Why? you know, game is a big MMA looking motherfucker. Oh yeah. And he and can fight a little you, bit. Uh, and if you think that <laughs> if you think that you're gonna see game in the next couple of weeks, <laughs> game not gonna try you. Okay, then you bugging. Yeah, yeah. All right. So but cause you gotta know who you playing with, especially in times like this, because once again, pain is real. Mm -hmm. Nipsey passing away is painful. Yep. People want to redistribute that pain. Yep. And there will be no disrespect to Nipsey Hussle's name. There will be no disrespect to his family's name in no way, shape, or form. All right? When people but say don't to, redistribute it. Don't, don't continue the trauma. It. Nah, I'm with Find you. Find a I'm different with you. way to communicate. Listen, I agree with you 100%. And my, my, my biggest issue out of this whole situation was even like, you know, the radio stations banning Kodak's music. Right. I understand why you would do that. But I have to... I, I, I have to... No, why? If the why is because it's a disre he was disrespecting Nipsey, I understand. But let's not act like it's let's not take some fake moral stance and act like it's because uh, he disrespected Lauren. Because if you disrespect one rapper for disrespecting a woman, you got to pull like ninety percent of the playlist off back back catalog and now because ninety percent of hip hop was built on disrespecting women why and misogyny. That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Hey man, hey man, is Honey already in this? Thing? Okay. All right. Let's um No, I'm good. Let's close out with uh Wendy Williams. Oh man. Uh, I've been saying Oh man. For the longest that I hope Wendy It's Williams, coming down. I just been saying I hope Wendy Williams wakes up before she doesn't wake up and it seems like she woke up because she filed for divorce, man. Oh boy. And you know, I I think it's good for her. You know, she's been getting abused on various levels for years, so now she's finally freeing herself and you know, I just think she can't have acid though. She can't have what? She can't have ass. What you mean by that? Like, she got to, like, fire that fool from all his business ventures. Right. You know what I'm saying? Drop his last name. You know what I mean? Because it's not know. like we look at her and say, oh, that's Wendy Williams Hunter. We never even knew this guy until this week. Exactly. Like, we say that's Wendy Williams. In fact, he is Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams. You know what I'm saying? So we don't look at him and say, oh, we don't look at her and say, oh, that's Wendy Williams Hunter. Wendy Williams is the name that is going to still generate multi-millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Even whatever... You know, money you got to give him. You know what I'm saying? To go buy more trash-ass Third World Supreme outfits. You know what I'm saying? Whatever money you got to give him, you're going to get that money back by being Wendy Williams. Yeah. So you got to just drop the hunter. No yeah. business. No having that shit on your name no more. Yeah. We ain't fucking with no hunters. No duck hunters. No bird hunters. No deer hunters. No Kelvin hunters. You know what I'm saying? No <laughs> Kelvin hunters. The hunter thing is dead. Yeah. I think she does that. She's going to be A-OK. -okay. And you think she'll be smart enough to make that decision? Um... I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because he's still a part of the TV show. Right. I think that's kind of dangerous on Dead Bar Mercury's part. Dead Bar Mercury is the production company that yeah, runs the TV show. The reason I think it's dangerous is because this is an abusive person on a lot of levels. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of things. We've yeah. all heard a lot of things. Yeah. It's kind of dangerous to have him in that situation. You think he's just going to sit around and watch Wendy pull up with another guy? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Plus, yeah. he's just going to be verbally abusive. And, like, y'all ain't tired of all that yelling and screaming at Dead Bar Mercury yet? Like, yeah. Kelvin Hunter is a grown-ass boy. And sometimes with grown-ass boys, you have to kick grown-ass boys out the house. Mommy kicked him out the house. Right. Now Kelvin has to go be a man on his own. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So 
pray for Sharina Hudson, a.k.a. Nikki, because now she got to deal with that motherfucker 24-7, 365. Yeah. <laughs> right? You got what de- you wish. Exactly. Yeah. You got, she got to deal with all that yelling and screaming. You're going to realize being 12 years a side chick was a nice, comfy position. <laughs> right? When you got to take on these full-time duties and this motherfucker is not going home. It was a, part, it was a period where he had to go home. Now you don't got to go home no more. When you realize that shit, you're going to be out too. He ain't gonna get another side chick. Uh, it's, it's, no, his reputation is too ruined. And plus, he looks really stupid. I yeah. am sick of him in his outfits. I want somebody okay. to make a. I want somebody to make an Instagram page called Kelvin's Closet and just show people what the midlife crisis closet fucking looks like. I'm dead serious. Like all his fits are like, and I really feel this way. You know how like when the losing team loses in the Super Bowl and yeah. NBA Finals, they send all that shit to third world countries. <laughs> That's what they send. Again. This motherfucker Supreme is from like. Mozambique and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he wears, like, the fucking designer brands that are in Haiti. And Haitians don't even use them to wear. They burn them for for, for fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, for warmth. Like, for warmth. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, listen, more power to her. I'm tired of seeing Kevin walking around here like a fucking... I, he had this one outfit on the other day. I didn't know if he wanted to be on... If he didn't want to be an undercover cop or a motherfucking go to the Made in America Festival. No, you know, he looked like he didn't want to go to the gym or the Made in America Festival. Like he was just going to get in the car, smoke a blunt, and when he get there, he was going to figure it out. Yeah. But this this motherfucking outfit, yeah. I don't even know if we can post this shit because it was in a fucking, um, a fucking uh, the tabloids and they charged for this shit. But this motherfucker was dressed like a fudge scrap cookie, bro. Yo. <laughs> look, at that, look at that shit. That motherfucker looked like a Keebler fudge stripe <laughs> oh cookie. What the fuck is he wearing? Dude, that's hilarious, man. What the fuck is he wearing, bro? That shit looks stupid. <laughs> but more power to Wendy. I hope that uh she really, really does <laughs> go through with her divorce. I think that a lot of times people can block your blessings. This is another story that I told in Black Privilege. This is a story of Kelvin Hunter. When I got fired from radio in Philadelphia, and, um, you know, immediately Power 105 reached out. So when Power 105 reached out, I didn't want to make the same mistake that I made before, which was going to negotiate with the radio station in Philly, which I'm glad I did. And the reason I did that is because I knew Kevin Kelvin was going to fuck shit up for me just because of the type of person he is. Right. So when I went to negotiate my, my gig in Philly, which was 70 grand a year, and he wanted to get $250,000 a year, yeah. but it's fucking 2009. We just had to, we're in the middle of the worst, one of the worst financial crises America's ever fucking seen. Right. That kind of, I, was, I was happy to even be just getting a job. Right. So I understood that I just needed to get that opportunity. Which was something that Wendy told me to do, by the way. Thank you, Wendy, for that advice, because you was right. right. But when I didn't want to make that same mistake, because I was worried about a personal relationship over business, I bought him here with me to Power 105 to get the job. And um, I remember sitting down with Cadillac Jack and G-Spin, and you know we had a great conversation, but I never heard from them. Didn't hear from them until the summer and this is after me and Kev had stopped fucking with each other totally. And I remember reaching out to G-Spin saying, yo, I'm in New York. He's like, yo, come by the radio station. So I go to the radio station and I sit down with G-Spin and Cadillac again. I'm by myself. Cadillac goes, yo, is Kelvin Hunter still your manager? And I was like, no, because when I pray to God to take negativity out of my life, he's not swinging at spirits. He's swinging at people and things that are the, the embodiment of that negativity. And Cadillac looked at me and goes, guy's got a weird energy, right? Huh. And he's like, yo, you know when y'all left... People were running into my office saying, you cannot hire Charlemagne as long as Kelvin Hunter is his manager. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? Because he has that much of a bad reputation. So therefore, I'm saying all that to say, people can block your blessings. And even though Wendy looks like she's blessed, she can even be more blessed if she gets rid of that motherfucking fucking old-ass hipster. All right? If she gets rid of that motherfucking yeah. old-ass hipster, you no telling where her life can fucking go. You know what I'm saying? So I really hope that she 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 listens to her spirit and understand that when she's praying for God to take negativity out of her life, he's not swinging at, you know, just things. He's swinging at, you know, people and things that, not just spirits, but swinging at people and things that are the embodiment of that negativity. Because yeah. he is definitely the embodiment of negativity. So Seems like it's a wrap for him, man. Hey, man. Oh, p- please. The guy has no skill set. Yeah. Kelvin Hunter, are you listening to me? You have no skill set. Yeah. Zero. Style. 
<laughs> not even Stop. not Charlotte. even a little bit might be the fly he can't hold it down might be the flyest dressed guy in a third world country you know what I'm saying he show up and that shit to be like why are you yeah. using our fucking Bro. why are you using our fucking fuel our, your, that, that's our fuel take that off so we can burn it yeah. throw it on the fire so we can have our warmth you know what I'm saying he dresses like a Russian break dancer <laughs> no he does it's all <laughs> All puffy vest like a puffy motherfucker. Puffy vest matching everything man. head to toe. Listen, man. God bless Kelvin. You know. Will we what? Will you and Wendy? You think you you and Wendy will ever hang out again? I don't feel the need for that. No. Nah. I wish you the best, though. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I wish you the best. Like you. It's weird. Sorry to interrupt, but it's mm -hmm. weird that a production company would even continue to allow someone that was abusive, that we know is abusive, to be around at all. They're waiting on the class action lawsuit. Okay. That makes more sense. No, that doesn't make sense. But that's the only explanation. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like, you, you got to be waiting on the class action lawsuit. You got to be waiting for all these people that have complained about him to just hit y'all at one time. Because there's no reason that he should still be walking that's around that thing. You have a woman who's like, life is that's it. in danger and you're letting some that's guy That's it. Who's... Sever your ties. Give him his severance package. Let him go live happily ever after yeah. with motherfucking Sharita. Sharina Sharina in the new baby you yeah. know what I'm saying in a Keebler elf house in the Keebler elf motherfucking house yeah. let him go buy all the fudge scrap outfit cookies yeah, yeah. he motherfucking wants he dresses like right? a newborn baby <laughs> he those like are the exact outfits baby. that you would put a baby in right like head to toe Fendi that's all he is is a grown ass little he's baby. a has been hipster bro bro give me more outfits I just want to see more <laughs> things on, that this guy's in pull up some shit Taylor bro that outfit that Fendi outfit. Shit. He looked like a fucking tiger shark. He's a has been hipster, and his yeah. wardrobe is a reflection of his mind state. He's a grown ass boy. Yeah, he's got a midlife crisis closet. Yeah, he does. You know what I'm saying? And he's really trying to hold on. Is that attractive to you, girls? <laughs> like when you see a guy who's sixty dressing like that? Let me see this one. This shit is horrible, man. This is. Oh, this one, yeah, he's in a he has a headband on, but he's not doing any exercise. Let me see. I don't understand let me see, let me people see. who have a headband but aren't doing exercise. By the way, yeah. no, that was back in Dude, the day. He, that was back in the right day. Here, he looks like Master P with diabetes. But that was decent. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you why that was decent. Dude, he looks like no. Manny not so fresh. Bro, that, <laughs> bro, that was decent because that was back in the day. That was back in the day when you could be simple. Little jersey, little headband. Right, the shit he be doing now. Yeah. My God, That's too much. You need to divorce your stylist the way Wendy's divorcing <laughs> you, bro. <laughs> like, cause I don't think you're putting that shit together on your own. That's what's the sad part about it. Is. No, no, not at I all. Dude, we got to find more pictures of him. I I'm listen, Kelvin's more. closet. Somebody find Someone all the pictures Kelvin's of Kelvin's closet, closet and put that shit on the Instagram page, bro. Oh wow. We we want to see what a midlife crisis closet looks like, man. We want to know what has been hipsters are all about. All right. Oh, dude, he's one of these guys who like his his. Yeah, he doesn't really have a neck. It's just like <laughs> shoulders into head. Have you seen that? This shit is disgusting, dude, man. look at this thing, man. It's disgusting, this is, man. Dude, he would make a great like medieval soldier. You know what I think is fucked up, too? Because you can't chop his head off with the guillotine, you know? <laughs> you got to knock it off with like one of those big Thor hammers. That's the only... Look at it. His head is sturdy, man. Look at that. He's built... Dude, he's built like a stocky Gumby. He's a fucking clown. <laughs> Listen, you know what else is sad? The What's fact that? that he's going to end up getting paid from this whole situation. You think he's going to end up getting paid? Yeah, of course he's going to get paid. But it, 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 I think it's fucked up for him to get paid when he was the problem. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. that when you get divorced for irreconcilable differences and those irreconcilable differences are the fact that you was out here cheating <laughs> on, on your on. woman and had another baby, you shouldn't be entitled to half. You know what I'm saying? You think he'll get half of everything? He's going to get a he going to get a he going to get a nice little chunk. What what kind of chunk are we talking about? Like a shit. chocolate chunk cookie made at a Keebler Elf house. This shit here, this, this shit here is wild for the Let night. Me Let me see. Let me see. Taylor made that. This shit is wild, Let me see, bro. Let me see. This Let me shit see. is wild, bro, bro. You cannot dress a baby more like that, right? Like this is your dream outfit for your newborn. Like if you're like, yo, I'm a flex on a grand for when, my when, baby. When? I'm a hip hop baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he look like, yo. Bro. If you want to dress a baby up from Brownsville. 
<laughs> if you want, if, if you want to dress a baby up fresh out the pink house projects, that's how you dress him. <laughs> God, we gotta show this picture. We'll show it on the YouTube. But this guy is in head to toe Fendi, brown that's what that and is? black. Yeah, it's Fendi. I don't know what the fuck that was. Yeah, it's Fendi. <clears throat> yeah, this guy right here. Anyway, man. congratulations. He's got the hat Andy. and everything. I need more pictures. You got to give me more pictures. We Kelvin's gotta, closet coming soon. Roast Kelvin. We'll do a roast Kelvin section. Coming soon. All right, man. <sighs> Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. Yes. If you listen to Ooh, this podcast... Real think, quick. Oh, go ahead. Westerbros, it's coming back. Okay. Okay? This uh, Monday, so Game of Thrones is this Sunday. We're doing this season of Game of Thrones. So Monday, Westerbros, get it everywhere podcasts are at. Oh, Game of Thrones, let's start this Sunday. Oh, huh? yeah, it's on, man. It is fucking on. So we're going to do it. We're back. So we'll see you guys this Monday for Westerbros. And make sure you cop tickets to all the shows. Do it real quick, man. I'm telling you, these shows sell out. And uh, there's nothing I could do once they sell out. So go real quick and get them shits. All, all right. right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely yeah. right. If you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, Shit, you're right too. It's the brand this podcast. Thank you for listening. Yeah, there. This podcast, guys, this amazing podcast has been brought to you by Philo. Okay, get over fifty of your favorite channels like Revolt, BET, OWN, VH1, AMC, MTV, We, Nickelodeon, ID, Lifetime, TLC, History. Etc. with Philo. Philo brings you live and on-demand TV plus unlimited recording for only $20 a month with no contract needed. Philo is available on Roku, iOS, Fire TV, Android, Apple TV, everything. Okay, to start your free trial, visit philo.tv slash idiots. That's P-H-I-L-O dot TV slash idiots. Okay? 